Yo, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode of the Need to Know Podcast. I know last week, a lot of the people who tap into the pod, <laughs> y'all were frustrated with us. Sorry, y'all. Oh. And I don't like the fact that human nature is to pay attention to the negative more than the positive, but... It is. That's just how I'm wired. <laughs> <laughs> you can do both. So we did see a lot of the hate, uh, but as we address the hate, I also do want to welcome those who've been rocking with us, who don't tune in, depending on who's on the pod and who's not. Thank y'all. We salute appreciate y'all, it. Salute you know, salute <laughs> to y'all. And then there's a lot of y'all who had some gripes about, you know, our previous guest, who is family, by the way. It's oh, somebody sure. yes. who supports so us on camera, behind camera, mm-hmm. somebody who is very established in this space. One day... I want to, you know how Meek Mill wanted to hire an investigator to see why <laughs> people think him yeah. and Diddy was like getting it in? <laughs> yes. Oh, shit. Real quick. Yeah. Uh, I can't go crazy on the edits today. Y- you got to relax. I can't. Because I was about to go in. Our producers but I, are in. Yeah. Producers, we, we down a man. But <laughs> yeah. one day I do want to do some type of investigation. And what is the internet's love-hate relationship with Mandy B? I think it's like she incites a reaction always with whatever she does. But then also she has her core audience that really, really, really loves her. Like the work that she does with Horrible Decisions and all her other pods. She talks about like, if you really listen to her, she talks about like women's issues, like stereotypes and like being free with your sexuality. She talks about a lot of important things that might not appeal to everybody, but to her core audience that like she's really out here changing people's lives with the shit she talks about. So people are invested. Yeah, and the internet hates strong-minded people that can't be swayed. Yeah. Okay. That's Let's true. say if they die on the hill and everybody else knows that they're wrong, they're like, damn it. But res- respectfully, she's entertaining. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm going to do the Meek Mill investigation on that. We don't I'm going to do the Meek Mill investigation. I'm going to pay right, somebody 100000 to figure out <laughs> why y'all treat Mandy B the way that y'all do. Uh, but with that being said, it is the Need to Know podcast. Thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for joining us. Uh, I go by the name Savon. I'm going to leave the S-A-V-O-N at home today. Why? Because, but because you sometimes... Changing. Nah, you know what it is? You changing, I'm, I'm exhausted, bro. Yeah. Same. I'm exhausted. From, from, the, the, from the, end, the end this week is negative energy. All right? <laughs> that's what the end stands for the, this week. That's what it stands for. Like, my energy, and not that I've been around negative energy, because nah, everybody nah, nah. I'm around is always positive, but the end stand, like, my energy is moving, is negative. <laughs> it's going into the yeah. negative. You mean, like, physically yeah. draining. Physically, gotcha. just, yes. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm here, and I'm with my guy. Hey, what up, y'all? It's your boy, A, as always, the pocket of on Poppy. Never alone, I'm always with the posse. Hello, guys. It's me, Reggie, and I would like to announce that I'm trying to become a tea girl. Hey, welcome, welcome. I'm a very... Oh, welcome. are you a big tea person? Oh, yeah. Chai tea Same. all the way. Oh, well, fun fact. Chai means tea. Mm. So saying chai tea is incorrect. No, get- <laughs> so it's tea tea? I like, I like, I like tea teas. <laughs> Yeah, right. but I'm, a, I'm a lifelong iced coffee girl. <laughs> Even in a snowstorm and a blizzard, I need my cold brew iced coffee. But now I'm like, Regina, that is ridiculous. Come on. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to become a tea girl. Please send all your tips. And okay. I would like to introduce the best dressed person on the pod today. Mm-hmm. It's our guy, Pierre, the Yo, man with the plan behind you know, the can. Sporting a Reggie T. Yo, listen, <laughs> if you ain't got a person like Reggie in your life, your life is going bad. You're doing wrong. For sure. Aww. So make sure you have somebody like Reggie in your life or you name somebody that could fill the role of Renee and Reggie. It's so true. basically, Reggie got us these, uh, these shirts as gifts. Mine says Valley Dreams. Um, and he's wearing right it, yeah. Nah. Um, I was inspired by Alex because Alex wore yours uh, a few weeks ago. So I was like, you know, I might as well Almost it. got married off that shit. <laughs> oh my God. And I know he really liked the shirt and he wasn't bullshitting me because he wore it to a very important Rock Nation event. So I was like, oh my God, he likes <laughs> he it. He likes it. And yeah. I'm not pressuring, I'm not pressuring Savon, you know, just wear <laughs> when the time is right. She's pressuring no, I keep it. No, it's, it's in my car at all times. Don't, oh, so don't you're feel ready. pressure to wear nah, it. I keep it on me. You, oh, you keep it on you. I keep that thing on me. I keep it tucked whenever you're ready for it. Like a good condom. What? Oh my goodness. What's one thing you guys always have on you? Uh, my wallet. Keys. No, like like a silly answer. <laughs> he said the most. Like, yo, Alex. No, you don't oh, care. What? Yo, I really what you mean? yo, I can't stand you. No, like me, I'll go to provide inspiration. For me, I always have napkins on me. Oh, really? Yes. If I if I like if I'm out, like I always have a stack of napkins on me because yeah. Oh, and, gum, and gum and gum. So if, if you ask me for gum and I say no, I'm fucking lying to you. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys go, what do you guys carry? Hmm. I always keep something on my wrist, like my little beads. Okay. I always oh, keep yeah. like my beads. You like, right now, no, beads I, 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 it's in my pocket. It's, it's staying in my pocket. Okay. Don't worry. He says it's a comfort thing. Okay. Yeah, it's like a comfort thing. So I always keep something on my wrist. Yeah. Oh, um, that's cute. Yeah, outside of like yeah. 
Obviously, you need your keys, Alex. <laughs> Obviously, my you need your wallet. Being dead ass. <laughs> like, my wallet I, keys. I, I was like, my keys, wallet. You I know, need my ID. I need yeah. my identification. Yeah, like, from the, like, my drawers. I don't know. <laughs> Alex, I was like, what she mean by that? <laughs> I'm like, no, Alex, be silly. Alex, <laughs> Alex always brings his Blistex. A little, my Blistex little friend. and my spectacle cleaner. <laughs> Wait, what? I'm showing it to Wait, the camera really right does. now. I really do have it with me right now. I wear glasses for the people out there that wear glasses. If your shit's just dirty, it look like a sandstorm when mm-hmm. you're walking. So you I, never have like yeah. smudge on your glasses. I, I'm but trying to tell why. you. This is why. This is I'm trying to tell you. I don't want to be a smudgy nigga. You're a very particular <laughs> man. Thank you. Very particular. I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate that. I've I've, I've, I've observed that about you. Like you're very particular in how you kind of just live in the world. Particular. And I appreciate that. Bio. I appreciate that. I'm gonna put that in my bio. I'm a particular man. You really are. (laughs) (laughs) Like legit. You 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 have some things about you that you just is it's you. It's you through and through. And I appreciate it. He does things in a very like specific way. Yeah. Yeah. Very automated. He's a particular man. Uh, With that being said, (laughs) I have to and if. Like, this is going to be really hard, especially coming off of last episode. Mm -hmm. If y'all were with us last episode, and I do apologize sincerely, not only to the audience, but to our producer, Kieran, super producer, Kieran, Mm -hmm. and to my brother who's doing the timestamps and to Mason, who's also with us every single Tuesday. The people in the back, I'm sorry. I apologize. (laughs) Who's wild? (laughs) Because last week, there were some words I thought I could bring back. All right? (laughs) Me and Mandy, and shout out to Mandy, because Mandy (laughs) allows me to live in my truth. Outside. She does bring that out of you. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Like, I feel comfort with Mandy. Y'all but, don't do that. For yes, me. we do. We let you live in your truth. We nah, just yeah, tell that, you that your truth be a little off. That sometimes. was mean. But we let you live in your truth. Y'all Wait, judge me. The fact that you feel comfortable around, around uh, Mandy, is that bad? Uh, or? It should be judged. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was about to say. Uh, it, we, sh- it should no, be judged. No, no, we don't judge you. We analyze. Yeah. We let you say all your problematic <laughs> things. We yeah. just we just always like um push back. Absolutely. But Mandy doesn't push back because she always agrees with your problematic takes. We support each other. <laughs> we support each other here too. And so with that being said, <laughs> this is gonna be a very difficult episode for me. Uh-oh. Because our producer is down. He's not here with us. Again, mm-hmm. shout out to Karen. Hope all is well, my good brother. Yeah. Um, so I can't say the things that I really want to get off my chest. Like right now, it's at the tip of my tongue. Wow. Like I can't wait to get off of. No, you, no, we're not you, bringing that word back. That one is we, hard. We can just bleep it out. So wait, you trying Jesus. to get canceled, right? I, no, I'm with you. we can no. go cancel together. No, you, you won't do it. Yeah, well, you're not about that. You sure I you sh- won't do it? Every- Say on. If it's one thing you know, you know what I'm about. Nah, that's your word. Stop what? it. You brought that one. Back. What word? Wait, what word? <laughs> wait, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, I love Alex. But yeah, we don't got Karen what? today. Don't play with me like so I'm supposed. You know, nah, nah, nah. You, you, you be with it sometimes. Uh-huh. I ain't gonna lie. You be with it sometimes. It gotta be, you know, give and take. Give and take. I'm mad at that. Uh, yo, Pierre. Yo. You you said you wanted to talk to us about some shit. Yo, so one thing I noticed about Pierre. Yeah. Pierre, Here we you go. are very astute, very observant. P. But in some cases in the group chat, and we could talk about this like as a collective, <laughs> as a friend group. Oh, I love these sessions, you know, when we really talk about our dynamic and figure some shit out like a therapy session. Nah, that ass. <laughs> we're, we're gonna, like, Pierre yeah. sometimes just doesn't <laughs> read the room. <laughs> Okay. He's great. He's great. Like Pierre oh, is what great. Do you mean? Is what he does, yeah. and we like. That's Pierre, the amount of innocence he has. I, him, though. It, I think that's what it, it, it comes is. From so a much good innocence. Place. It, it does. It may be naivety for sure. Damn, not you calling me naive. Naivete. <laughs> that's Wait, crazy. no, but explain. Please. But like, so obviously Tuesdays is the day that we record, right? And <laughs> all of us are trying to, you know, dive into the topics, all give our <laughs> input. Like, hey, what are we going to talk about today? Yeah. And then at least twice a month. <laughs> Pierre will throw something in the group chat where it's like, hey, yo, P, you know we don't know nothing that you're talking about, and nor do we want to learn anything about what you're talking about. And you, like, Cause, how don't you know this about Pete, your friends? Right? In my mind, you guys are doing the research throughout the week. Got you. So there might be one or two things that you might have missed that I just so happen to catch. Mm. So let me throw it in there to see if my guys <laughs> and Reggie... You know, might have might have stumbled upon it and to the yeah, point of like you wanted to talk. But about it'd it. be the things you be catching. <laughs> Can we all explain, agree? Explain that sometimes you are a man of God. He he, Pierre. Like he don't read the yeah, room all yeah. the time. We all have a friend who just Bro, maybe a right, little tone deaf. That, that, nah, that narrative is not sticking with me. Mm. Ah, yeah, get him. Yo, get I don't know. I don't From know about ch- no, no. This him. is what I think. Let's uh, just be open and honest. Uh, this is let's do okay. It. I don't think. Saying P oh Pierre doesn't read the room. I don't think that is the right phrase to describe what he okay. be doing in the I chat. That. I think we're Talk just fine. This is my opinion. I think <laughs> we find different things entertaining. 
like and interesting oh, so when okay. he puts cer- certain topics in there i'm like I don't want to talk about this. So, so, so that's my take on it. So Pierre, <laughs> great lawyer, right there. She's and, a great. And lawyer. we don't have to stay here. But what was the topic that you suggested to us today? Like this, guys. That we all was like, <laughs> okay, y'all decide it's, in the comments. Nah, it's, like... the, it's the backstory. So a lot of things that that come across, the, like the timeline or the things that I see. Yeah. I try to think of a funny angle, like how you guys would react to it, like the one I'm thinking now that I'm not gonna say. Just right? say it. For we the have audience. to. We have to. We were talking so, about it. So I watch, you know. A lot of streamers and <laughs> academics. Yeah, academics being one of them. <laughs> the, the only one. Yo, that's like <laughs> Pierre's president. <laughs> nah, it's just like academics is his neo. <laughs> <laughs> For me, hey, that's actually not uh, that's not bad. That's, that's crazy. That's crazy. That's so cr- but okay, Loki. keep going. Um, so something came across <laughs> that uh, he was he was interviewing this guy named Gucci Thurleg like, with uh, with Aiden but, Ross. But time out. Yeah, <laughs> you read that name. You think. First off, I don't have a lot of time. None of us have a lot of time, okay. right? And I get it. I see things trending on Twitter. But Reggie is in the chat. Yeah. So when you throw a topic in there like, hey, guys, y'all want to talk about the third leg? No, he said... I didn't say it. You read he it. He said something you like... You read it as third leg because your response was, his what? No, he was like, y'all want to talk about Gucci's third leg? I was like, what? what? His what? I said, I said Gucci's? So I'm not going to lie. No, I think I was wrong. Yeah, uh, I think he said Gucci third leg because that's his name. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that was his name. I thought you guys were talking about, you know what third leg means? I didn't see Gucci that either. But what I do, like... So... I hate this about the internet now. Mm-hmm. If we just are in the same room, our algorithms pick up off each other somehow. Mm-hmm. I don't know if y'all knew, noticed that. Sure. Absolutely. But the other day I was talking to my mom. I was looking for like a portable monitor for my laptop. I never said the word portable monitor at all. I never said it. You just I, like you I just kept showing my mom the image on my laptop. I'm like, hey, mm-hmm. mom, you think this one is good? Like my mom, she's a nerd. So Aww. whenever I need to really get information, I'm like, hey, mom, what are the spectacles? What are the di- dimensions on this? Like, I'm asking my mom. And so I never said the word portable monitor. Thanks. But for whatever reason, on her Instagram, she's scrolling, she's scrolling, she's scrolling. And then she goes, say, Vaughn, look. And so I look at her phone, and it's an advertisement for a portable monitor. Scary. So for me and her, we look at I'm like, <laughs> That's yeah. definitely a thing. Yeah. I'm like, yo, ma, I, I asked her, I said, ma, did you say anything about a monitor? She said, no, we never said anything about that. So I know that <laughs> yeah, they bad. are detecting our algorithms mm-hmm. through Wi-Fi, through mm-hmm. proximity, whatever the case may be, like, it's getting crazy. And what I think, I also think that they're detecting, like, our debit transactions because I'll buy, like, a snack or something, yeah. and then, like, on John's computer, it'll, like, show him an ad for that snack. Yeah. And like, I don't crazy. know, some shit like that. I, I think know. it's fucking with our yeah. touch, too, because I'll think about something. I was just about to say that. <laughs> And, He's like, no, they're just and, in our brain. And it shows up out of nowhere, I right? promise you, like, the moment I go to search it, it's right there before I can even finish the sentence. Right. I'm like, nah, this it's is scary. You in my brain, bro? It's yeah, scary. at first we the used to fuck? joke about this, but now it's like, we're not even joking. This like, we're really not good. exaggerating. It's manifesting. And I know we're going to get to robots. Pierre, please mm-hmm. hold that thought oh. with the robots. Yeah, take time. Yeah. But even with that, yeah, with the third leg, th- third leg thing. <laughs> so you can't even yeah. say it. Yeah, I can't even. I can't even imagine third, that nigga's even, third leg. But I just nah, learned all this last night. So, so on, I bet. when Pierre typed in, "Hey, we should talk about Gucci third leg," I scrolled on my Twitter, and please, anybody who else have may have seen this on their algorithm, don't. There was a homeless guy. Oh, I seen the same shit. He was laid out. Oh my on God. the street with a rocket on him. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. I, let's call a spade a spade because I was getting upset that all the serious people on Twitter was like, this poor man was laying out in the street and all you guys could do is joke. Yeah, man, all he's going to do is joke. Some girls don't want to deal with that. Bro, I seen this homeless nigga. His, his jeans were ripped. He looked like he really was in a tough situation. But then I seen his third leg. I said, is it really that tough? Nah. Yo, you know Karen's not here. We're not editing that out. No, it's nah, fine. Staying. We Yo, didn't say anything. Had a whole rock in him. Bro, <sighs> so when he mentioned <laughs> Gucci's or Pierre's third leg, whatever third leg. Pierre's third said, leg. I'm thinking like, yo, thinking. why is my algorithm infiltrating me in this way where right. this homeless nigga, he's laid out. Mind you, he's unconscious. There is no blood flow to this dick. <laughs> I don't know. Wait. It was like limp? You was analyzing it? Nah. I see. Nah, I had. I was tight. I don't know. I was angry. I'm, I can't <laughs> lie. Bro, I'm like, why you was angry? Cause nah, that's Cause, crazy. Uh, Cause somebody that's, that's homeless had a rocket like that. Bro, with no, <laughs> <laughs> you seen it? I seen it. Well, why I you, to, why you have to call it a rocket though? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yo, one thing about me. 
hey man, shrimp scampi is shrimp scampi, <laughs> and rockets are rockets. Yeah. So when Pierre introduced the topic, I'm like, all right, Fuck maybe this is what he's talking about. But clearly, he, yeah. with a rocket on him. <laughs> nah, I thought it was about to detonate. <laughs> right, bro. No, oh. fault, nah, because, nah, that's, that's wild. That's no, wild. because it was a homeless yeah. guy, right? But well, his, they said he was. His clothes know. was very disheveled, like Savon was saying. We don't, we don't know his story. But when y'all, see right, image, right. when, y'all see, when y'all see the image, what y'all think? Uh, I didn't like. I mm-hmm. saw it on my timeline, but I was interested in the comments because I love when women get raunchy. But what was your comment? Why I is, didn't have a comment. I did. Why is he homeless? Oh yeah, that's what the one. They're like, I'll, I'll take him in. Gosh, I'll take him in. The women hey, came yo. out. Was like, yo, I house him. I clean him. Yeah. There's no reason why. Come on now. We know. I love when women were like. They were like, oh, I'm such a pervert. I'm no better than a man. Did that, did that make the Did that make the group chat? Like, do ladies like the homeless beef rocket? <laughs> yo, yo, what's up with you? You good? Well, no, we didn't send. <laughs> stuff oh in the group God. chat okay all right that didn't so really yeah that's what chat. i thought the gucci third oh, leg was shit. about when i yeah. seen that homeless nigga like we got to find that picture we got to find that guy and we got to no, like we don't. We should, should we put it as a cover art <laughs> no we don't <laughs> no we, no he done already been found pierre did you see it he saw it man he just be trying to act um, all cool because he machismo he unfortunately saw i saw it look so everybody seen the homeless man then, yeah with the rocket <laughs> Wild got stuff. It. You said it. I never referred to that as a rocket yeah, in my I, life. There's a difference between seeing and analyzing. I think what you and Alex did was analyze. Why, how we analyzed it? <laughs> you said what you, a rocket. So you don't know. So, all right, you lucky Karen I hit a day. What you about to say? Now niggas don't Be know something as big as small. <laughs> Yo, y'all mad? I'm I'm comfortable with my sexuality. Oh yeah, yeah, because no, 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 because some dudes were hating on the picture, and then all the girls in the comments were like, "Is your shit small? Why are you mad?" Yeah. <laughs> all the shrimp scared me. Started speaking. Huh? Sometimes you can't hate. You just gotta congratulate. Did hello? Because salute him. If you really think about it, that's an episode title. You also gotta salute think him. about like the trade off, right? Uh huh. You could have that that what he got with his bank account, or you could have something that's a little bit more average <laughs> and be living well so like you gotta really pick and choose your battles because <laughs> i don't like i think i still would choose me i hate the way people think people saw <laughs> you, 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 Wait, why can't you have both they don't exist you have a rocket and a big bank account you could have both you could someone could have, have both people you have could. both no you could but then all I right said, you know the phrase god is always fair so you can't have it all. <laughs> oh, God be on time. <laughs> yo. Like, so, yo, what? I don't know. Go for it, Reggie. I don't know because nah, I just, I just feel like no, 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 no. It's not that well. I feel like I am very blessed. Like God dealt me a great Whoa. hand. But I, I don't think. Okay. Mm, wait, what are you talking about? Reggie? No, in my life, in my life, in okay. my life. Okay. I'm not talking about sexually. Oh, yo, shout okay. out to John. Shout 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 out I meant, I oh. meant like my life circumstances. You know, the Zoes, my fault. the Zoes be, you know what I mean? We be Zoes. So I like, meant like my family, my career, all that stuff. Okay. But then, you know, there are certain areas of my life where God was like, you know, I can't give you everything. Exactly. That's what I meant. Yeah, and I feel you. He's, I, I know he's on time, but mm. fair. Okay. But yeah, Sunday. I just, you always got to keep it in perspective. You got to keep it in perspective. Like my brothers all the time, they look at me and be like, yo, you didn't deserve a hairline. <laughs> That's, that's what crazy. I'm saying. No, no, no. And I'm not agreeing with them. But no, I'm saying, you know how there's like the one thing that God was like, eh, hey, not too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like LeBron James. Look at LeBron. Yeah. Imagine if LeBron James had Paul George's hairline. I see what you're saying. He would be like, <laughs> come on, you got you. Like, imagine if LeBron James <laughs> shot free throws like Kevin Durant or Steph Curry. Yeah. It'd be you fake. know, like it'd you gotta fake. have some type some of, of weakness mm-hmm. in your life. And so, if an average size penis is one of those like weaknesses, <laughs> you can still get it done. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Omar. Ladies, it's not. It's not about the size. Of the boat is the oh size of the boat is about the, the motion. Nah, of the ocean. I'm not gonna lie. That nigga shit was like this. Yo, you good? <laughs> okay, guys, let's get on to the topics. What the fuck? <laughs> nah. Let's go to the topics. All right, this is my last <laughs> comment. If you- Homie, if you out there, you need a consultation. Pull up, bro. We we can Wait, consult you. We what? can get you in a house. Nigga, shut up. I got what? you. You think I'm being some freak, nigga? Hush up. <laughs> hey, brother. I see your situation right now. I see you laid on the ground. Your clothes disheveled. If you need a consultation on how to get out the street, we got you, brother. There's some beautiful women out there ready to take that on. You do not need to be outside <laughs> with ready, no roof. He said, ready to take that on. <laughs> I'm telling you. 
Oh my god! Imagine someone listening to this didn't see the picture, so they don't know what, what we're talking about. No. Yeah, we go post it. I'm gonna send it to Kim. No, don't do that. <laughs> no, you a freak, boy. Kim no, would never let that happen. Uh, uh, you he too, might bro. not, but I'm gonna send it to him without any context. <laughs> <Yeah>. No, <laughs> I'm gonna just send it to in the group nah, chat. He gonna we don't see it. He gonna that's, look, isn't that her? He gonna turn red. Don't do uh, that. You know what? I can't do that. He gonna turn do red. Don't do that. <laughs> Yo, Pierre, what oh, you want to talk about? Some robots, some AI shit. Talk to me. Yeah. So I think by now everyone has heard how. Um, 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 Jeff, not Jeff. Bezos. <laughs> He's he fine. Yeah, he up. There you go. I, I think by now everybody's heard how Elon Musk has developed these iRobot type looking bots. Um, uh, he came out with the Gen 2 Optimus, they're called. Um, Optimus Prime. Basically, if okay. you want to think of it that way. Um, and it's one hand, it's the, the main thing that they're selling it on is that it's one hand can do at least a thousand things. One hand? One hand. So, okay. Um, okay. you know, just to rifle off some things that it can do, I wrote it down. It says, uh, it, it, it could hold clothes, dance, squat, fold shirts, handle eggs, um, and water plants and all that stuff. Okay. So my question to you guys is, again, this is like, I think it's selling now for twenty thousand dollars each. Okay. Um, Wait, that's like not that expensive for a robot. Yeah. I thought it would be more expensive. No. Okay. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure what Elon's doing. Yo, but Reggie, it's some stuff. I <laughs> so a, I get it alone. I get a dollar. I'm hard. <laughs> Yo, 20k light. Got she said that's You're light work. So that's light. Man. Oh said, my goodness. Yeah, flow, flow my clothes, you bitch ass robot. <laughs> <laughs> right fucking there. Yeah. Yeah. So my my question to you guys is, again, uh, Elon is saying this is supposed to help uh, certain things around the house and just help make life, quote unquote, a little bit easier. Oh yeah. So my mm -hmm. question to you guys is, what are the first two things that you would tell if you had the robot? What are the first two things you would tell it to do or commission it to to do? Constantly. Mm, that's uh -oh. a good question. This is getting dark real fast. Yeah, I have to see it. No, that's a good question. <laughs> okay. I think <sighs> the, the first two <laughs> things for me, and I'm gonna keep it practical. Uh -huh. I'm gonna keep it very because I'm a man of convenience. I believe mm. that time is worth more than anything. Pierre, actually, I think I put you on to like dropping your clothes off at the laundromat, right? So for yeah, me, for sure. I think the first thing I would do is make sure my robot is cleaning. Oh, for sure. Just make sure <laughs> every time I get home, my place is super, super clean. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Laundry, toilet but scrub. We already got a robot that do that. What's the shit that move around? On the I ain't line? got that robot. Oh, and that robot, uh, they ain't got no hands. I got that. All right. Uh, I'm such the a Roomba? The Roomba. No, but that shit does not work. Yeah, it, it, just, it don't always hit me. itself in the yeah, head yeah, like a dumbass. Yeah, that shit is not like, like, It got a dumb shit in it. It doesn't do <laughs> anything. Like, nah, yeah. but it reroutes after it hits. Can it cook? What the um, the robot the, the iRobot the Elon robot. Musk robot the Optimus? Uh, I don't think they've gotten that if far. If it yet. can't cook, then it's not worth it. Nah, <laughs> nah, nah. Y'all keep know, That's so scary. Like I don't want. I mean, I would love for my place to be clean every single time and have like have someone do it. But like, I don't want some machine digging through my stuff though. Hey y'all, uh, that scares me. Elon is fooling us, and y'all just keep key key keying because he keep making cool calls. <laughs> hey, I seen our robot. Facts. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, that's literally what is happening. Like that, that's our robot. And it, yes. look, it looks Shout very. It, it looks almost the same, almost identical as. Matter of fact, the producers of our robot. What do you know? Have beef about. Yeah. <laughs> and like the Tesla vehicles, a lot of like the more crazy ones, they resemble the vehicles in that movie. Now, and our robot. How was it presented at first? Like sci-fi. As like a sidekick. Oh like a, yeah. yeah, almost like a, a friend. Keep playing. Yeah. Movies and art have been trying to tell us imitates what is going to happen in our future. Im art imitates life. Art yeah. imitates life. Y'all keep playing. Let me tell you something. I'm supposed to sleep with that shit in my house. I That's why have, I said it's scaring me. The motherfucker gonna turn on. <laughs> <laughs> he gonna start bugging when I go to sleep. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you something. Wait, Wait, you mean so to tell me I'm going to go to bed <laughs> and the robot in the house while I'm asleep in my conscious, in my subconscious. That's they what y'all niggas sleep. is telling me. Hmm? I'm going to go to bed. Wait, He don't go to bed. Wait, he, you'd get the guy one or the girl one? Nigga, I ain't getting none of them. And you and you're nasty for asking because I know what you, where you're going. Oh, will they make non-binary so. robots? Uh, <laughs> I, but their voices. I think in order for Elon to really make this successful, he has right. to give it a gender. Right. Like, <gasps> if your robot don't come with a piece, like the homeless nigga, <laughs> no, it gotta either come with a piece or roast beef. No, it should not because that's when it's gonna get scary. Hey. Roast beef or pea? Beef. No, 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 it stop. should have neither. It should you have neither. You gotta ask. You gonna get you one of them Diddy cases, boy? You better no, stop. The, it's the roast. It's not me. Right. Ooh, I think it should be gender neutral. Like the roast beef. If you had to pick roast beef or beef. <laughs> what? No, you... Nah, for real. If you think do the science. <laughs> what the fuck is he talking about? If, yeah. your, if your robot came out flapping, 
<laughs> you re- you might make it clean. What will we you need might, that for? Just to to identify the gender of the robot. It, it it won't have a purpose. It won't serve a purpose. But if I'm talking to something, like you kind of just want to know what it identifies as. So whatever it identifies as could be in the midsection. I don't know. That could be that could get real degrading real quick. Wait. Because there's some men that'll get a woman robot. <laughs> And be like, get in the kitchen, bitch, or some shit like that. <laughs> like, oh, some shit like, that. Crazy. Oh. like they would they would say stuff like that, Damn. like in the comfort of their own home. And that really like I feel like that what is it called? Like reinforces people's mm-hmm. behaviors, crazy behaviors. Mm-hmm. How many things I don't like this? How many things can it do with his head? It said uh about a thousand. So there's twenty seven degrees of it's called twenty seven degrees of freedom, which is what humans have. So basically, it's de- it's dexterity it's what? Is through the roof. He said, "Is is what dex? It's dexterity. Dick terrorist through the roof. What the fuck is dick terrorist, bro? No, he didn't say that. <laughs> yes, he did. He it was a it Freudian up. slip. Nah, he Savon hears what he wants to hear. So he slip. wanted to hear. Right, well, Wait, what does Freudian Freudian slip Sigmund mean again? Freud? Wait, what? <laughs> no, okay. Is that how you say it? Nah, for real. Sig- nah, Sigmund Freud oh, oh is the smartest nigga that ever was alive oh, and shit. No. And when you say something that's that really actually- on your mind and you didn't mean to say it, it's your subconscious talking for you. That was Einstein. So when he says like, hey, yo, <laughs> dictation, and he just says, hey, yo, it's dick. Like that's that was a, what was yeah, on his mind. Yeah, that was really. Is that sub- really what that means? Subconsciously, nah. yeah. Oh, no, for sure. I, I yo, think, yeah, yeah, look it up. I think, Segment four. I think. For, I mean, yeah, he, he's like human is, behavior and behavior analysis. But I think Savon, what you're referring to is um. Uh, I forgot my train of thought. But you know you can look it up, Loki. <laughs> no, I'm just asking. He wants you to be. Yo, this is the second time. Second time in a week. <laughs> I'm but yeah, not putting up but now, nah, uh, just to wrap this up. Tesla looked like they had its uh, Apple conference of sorts, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Where they, they kind of had an unveiling of new products mm-hmm. and they presented uh, a Tesla taxi, which is a two-seater mm-hmm. with no steering wheel. You put in the destination and you're supposed to drive. It's called Robo Taxi. A Robo Taxi. And they're actually out on the road. Like, I've seen real people taking these. Wait, you've seen that exact one? Yeah, like, uh, <clears throat> like the uh, what? whatever it is, like, it pulls up. And you get in the car and it takes you to your destination. But, I, but those have steering wheels, I believe. Mm. Oh, yeah. Okay, this yeah. one is fully autonomous. Yeah. And sure. also, he has like the Robo Van, fully autonomous, no no driver. And it probably fit about 15, 20 people, it like a big ass sprinter truck. But I'm saying also to say, I think he's trying to trick us with cool products while in the background he is conjuring some bullshit. Y'all keep playing. Them people that know how to program shit, mm-hmm. watch how they program that iRobot you get. You keep playing. Um. Oh my gosh. I feel like with Reverse every engineering, watch very big digital advancement, everyone's always like so scared. Like, uh, like people hated iPhones when it first came out. Yeah. And I feel like with this, everyone's scared as well. But I feel like eventually it's going to become a normal thing because we're just advancing so fast. That's and it's the scary. Problem. That's the yeah. problem, Reggie. We making too much bullshit normal. But it needs to be some type of regulation on some of these things, and just I think technology. And the infrastructure of the government is just not moving at the same rate. Right. And so, like, our laws don't keep up with technology. Mm-hmm. Like, you know AI, what I'm like yeah. AI, AI can be dangerous. And right now, it we're is in, already. We're yeah. in the, it is dangerous. You know, going back to talking to my mom, she was playing this clip, and maybe I could find it really quick, but she was playing this clip of an uh, AI generated Justin Bieber song. Oh, and wow. the Justin Bieber song was talking about how Diddy was like doing things to Justin Bieber. Wow. Yo. It, but Yo. it sounded like Justin, like Justin Bieber, Bieber singing it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, and I had to look at her and I'm laughing at it because I, I think it's funny because I know it's AI. I've saw mm-hmm. it enough. I've been on the internet long enough where I to can know. determine. And I'm a Justin Bieber fan. So yeah. I could tell his voice versus a robot. <laughs> like I can't. Yeah. I AI. just know it's not real. It's, I know when it's an imitation, but it's like imitation crab. Like this <laughs> yeah. is not crab. Yeah. Y'all niggas made some fake rubber and like put it into my system, and cool. I I accepted it, but I know this is not crab, right? Yeah. That is what I heard when I heard the AI version of Justin Bieber. So my mom, she's like her eyes are wide open as she's listening to the song, and I had to tap her like, "Yo, ma." She's like, what are you talking? Like, you good. Ma, this is not real. She said, what do you mean this isn't real? She wouldn't know. She doesn't know. Because AI is that accurate with depicting 
your voice. I feel so bad for Copying parents. your voice. I feel so bad yeah, for because, parents. Yeah, because this is so dangerous with the Facebook aunties yeah. and the freaking WhatsApp community because like they don't know that this is fake and then it gets reshared like wildfire. Like Ooh. I know there's like this picture going around of something that for people our age, it's like clearly photoshopped, yeah. but they photoshopped a bunch of A-list celebrities to like um, a picture of like a Diddy party. I saw that. And it's like, but on Facebook, they will not know that's fake. No, they will not know that that is not Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, like, <laughs> damn. Like, there's a few of those pictures, and I'm like, whoa. At <sighs> least we can tell the difference. There mm -hmm. are people who don't have the the brain power, or just honestly, just the knowledge to know, like, yo, things are being manipulated out here. Yeah. So be mm -hmm. careful. And to so, like, no, go ahead. No, nah, go crazy. I was just gonna say, if like, if you're a content creator now, all it needs is like a small sample size of your voice. And then mm -hmm. again, it just it just mimics everything that you would ever say, and it does sound like you were cooked. And now the crazy thing is, even if like right, there's a lot of artists who have a catalog prior to AI. So I could have recorded a song in 1999, right? I could have had an entire album in 1999. All the AI has to do is listen to that entire album, and they can take my voice. I didn't have to record it in present day yeah. for AI to take my voice, my likeness, whatever the case may be. So this is the song that my mom heard. Oh, shit. Oh, yo. Yeah. Nah. Nah. Myself at a party. Oh my god! Nah, that shit sound like some Kiss Bop '85. Nah. You get what I'm saying, but like, nah. if it does sound like Justin Bieber. It though. sounds like yeah, like yeah. if you don't know Justin Bieber and you hear that, you're like, oh my god, he's giving it up because all you have to do is title that song as unreleased Bieber. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It. Like that's all you have to do. You don't have to make a full song. It's so easy to like deceive people, and so something like that is really dangerous. And I'm afraid. The only way we're going to fight this is to increase people's intelligence levels and discernment. <laughs> because the only reason I would know that that's fake, it sounds very real. But the only reason why I did not believe it, because it's so ridiculous. Like, he did not make a song saying, mm -hmm. did he part? You know, like, and you just, yeah. you just, like, know these things if you have good discernment. But, you know, Ugh, but you things know, are getting so scary. You know what confuses me when things like this happen? You would assume that when people don't realize that mass amounts of people are talking about it, that they will go, oh. This can't be real. Yeah. There will be more people talking about this. Yeah. And that brain, that light bulb just never goes off. But think about all of the people who, so in your personal life, and maybe, I don't know how yeah. often or frequent y'all experience this, but in my personal life, a lot of people who are older or even of our age and even younger who yeah. just aren't as tapped in in the entertainment space, they look to us to be to confirm things, yeah. to converse about things. Hey man, you see what's going on with Diddy? Hey man, you see what's going on? Like it's one of those things where they just associate us with entertainment and yeah. news and current events. And so for them, they don't have the nuance or the the tools to discern if these are real or not. No. Because <laughs> how like again, this song, the this snippet AI generated song, whatever the case, like Everything about it says this is Justin Bieber. If you really don't know. Yeah. Right? Like, I don't expect my parents or my grandparents to listen to that and to think, oh, no, this isn't real. Yeah. We had the luxury of growing up with the internet. Yeah. We have the luxury. I, and, and I love being a millennial. I think we get the best of both, both worlds. worlds yeah. no, I think absolutely. anybody before us is struggling and anybody after us has no hope. <laughs> That's like, not true. No, legit. I'm so no, serious. The kids is killing. They're killing Maybe in their space. They're killing yeah. in their own lane. I'm talking yeah. about having discernment. Like, I mean, yeah. we still have memories of playing Ding Dong Ditch. Mm -hmm. We understand Man what Hunt. it is to play to Manhunt, yeah. to play Tag, Seven Freeze out. Tag. We understand what it is to, when you want to pick teams, you got to count somebody's shoes. Facts. Put your shoe in, and we go doggy doggy diamond. Like, Step right yeah. in. Oh. Yeah, that's throwback. We, you know, Facts. we know that. There's a generation where that doesn't exist, so they're not really equipped for 
everything that even the internet is sending their way. Mm -hmm. And I think something like that is extremely fucking dangerous. And it's scary. Mm -hmm. It's scary. I don't want to have to be the filter for like what's real or what's not. And that's what our generation is is becoming. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, sometimes you got to be the filter. Uh-huh. You the chosen one, Savon. You lost yourself at a Diddy party. <laughs> that's what they, that's what he just said. Like, <laughs> Yo. but it sounds like Justin Bieber. No? And there's some it freaking aunties on Facebook sharing that shit right now. Like, yo, yo, have yo, you heard this? You brought up the WhatsApp community. Facts. Ooh. Oh my god. My mom is a member there. Same. And <laughs> I try to. I feel bad sometimes because he sends me a plethora of messages over there. And I don't even got that shit downloaded. Oh, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you can't do that. You just that's ignore terrible. your mom's messages. That's crazy. That's I tell, yo, just text him. <laughs> yeah, I'll be like, Ma, just text it over. I re-download it and I see, I catch up. But you're right. Over there, they're their own communities. <laughs> mm-hmm. Facebook, WhatsApp, they're, no one's doing the fact checking over there. I For love sure. how our generation, you know, we're I th- I feel like we're internet savvy. Like we're freaking doing a podcast and making clips for every week. Sure. But I remember when we were growing up, when we were introduced to the internet, there was a thing as it, there was such a thing as a computer room and oh a, and a computer desk. Fancy. When you wanted to play a game, you went into the d- you went and walked up to the desk, turned on the computer, and then you like did whatever, surfed the internet, whatever, and then turned it off and then went back to your regular life. So I feel like we had such a beautiful separation. And we're also, we grew up to be very tech savvy. So we really are the best generation. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I will say that I like the word you used said discernment for the next generation because the next generation is very, very tech savvy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like more than Generation Alpha, is that? Yeah. I don't know. After yeah. Gen Z. We got Z under us and then it's Alpha right after. Yeah. They are so. very sad. But they don't be outside. Yeah, that's the thing. And they never got punched in the face. Yeah, that's the thing. And I they never it. got called it in tag. Yeah, yeah. Or, like they or never bullied. been, you're it. I think their outside is different. Them young niggas is definitely outside. I just felt like it was a bit more raw when we was outside of the people before us. They outside. They definitely outside. They may be outside, yeah. but their outside is in a controlled environment to serve digital media. Absolutely. You or just control controlled environment in general. A, a lot of them. I don't want to talk about everybody because I know there's some people who are alpha. What is it? Gen alpha? Gener- yeah, generation alpha. Generation alpha. Mm-hmm. They may not subscribe to it or maybe they just don't, they can't afford it because to be really entranced in generation alpha, gen A, is is that a thing? Can I call it gen I, I A? Guess so. I guess yeah, fine. We're gen Y. Uh, I thought I, we, who's gen Z? Uh, the ones before the us. The old niggas? Right before us. And we're us. Y. Yeah, we're Y. And right. then it's gen A. All right, cool. That makes sense, oh, actually. That makes yeah, a lot of sense. Yeah. But the alpha, like, they just haven't, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in my opinion, it just, there, there are certain nuances of life that they may not be experiencing. Right. Mm-hmm. And having the best of both worlds is where we kind of land. And I hate to be that guy to be like, oh my God, we're the best. We're the best generation. But I, I do feel like we're the last of a dying breed. Mm, I don't I know. Really like, do. I really do. I really do. Like people from like let's say the sixties or whatever, like will probably look at us and be like, "Damn, there's like shit they never experienced." So like, that's true. It, it's that's always true. true you know? It is true. It yeah. is true. I guess it fits for everybody. Absolutely. Uh, with that being said, last week we didn't get a chance to talk about J Cole. We did not. Um, we <laughs> record on Tuesdays. J Cole he dropped on a Wednesday. I was really upset. I I really wanted to come in and record an yes. emergency podcast. Mm-hmm. I couldn't do it. We do have a new studio. Need to know studios oh, located yes. How do we in forget? East Williamsburg, oh Brooklyn, God. New York. Come book with us. Make sure y'all come book with us, come vibe with us. For we sure. have the best engineers in the business. Yeah. Courtney is behind the camera as I speak. Shout out to Courtney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and, and yeah, man. So yeah. I haven't really been able to do anything outside of what it is that we do on Tuesdays because we're building a studio up. Mm-hmm. But when J. Cole dropped, I did hit the group chat. Mm-hmm. I was low key first in the group chat to talk about Cole. You he was. I was waiting you, on Reggie to get in her, her was, bag. He was feet out. We was letting him breathe a little bit. Nah, that's <laughs> it. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. I'm not. I'm that's not what Cole said. No, I'm thirsty. No, it's funny. You no, get... no, no, no. What Cole actually said was, <clears throat> "What do you say?" My friends went to war. I walked away with all their blood on me. I love Reggie. This nigga ever been at a shootout? I love Reggie. Wait, Savon stepped on my rollout. That's how I want to introduce the topic. <laughs> okay, continue. Sorry. Because what did he mean? What did he mean by that? Uh, I just <sighs> okay. Look where at, do we start? Where, look at okay. all of us just taking deep breaths. Okay, and shit. I'm so, gonna last. I have Music Man and J Cole Woman. That's a sick lineup. Savon, <laughs> I don't know. There's just so many things to talk about. Like, okay, so for the new listeners, I'm sorry yeah. I say this every time, but I, J. Cole's my favorite rapper of all time. And honestly, 
Uh, call me like not purist, whatever the fuck. Like I, he's still <laughs> he's still my favorite rapper. Yeah, I agree that what he did in April was very very damaging. I did not support it. I wasn't like uh, a J Cole apologist for that. Like I was like, why the fuck did he back out of the battle, drop a song, delete yeah. it? Like I was not on board with that. But I don't know. Like there's just so much I want to say about this because it's like, what, um, what do you what do you think the premise of this of this track was? Right. So what is the track? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Poor, poor. Bad potting, potting. Sorry, <laughs> poor Antonio poor, by J Cole. Poor Antonio. Yeah. So, which is kind of like a tongue sister. I can't say that. Poor, 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 poor Antonio. Antonio. Poor, poor Antonio. Poor Antonio. Is that an actual poor? And maybe we need to do like the science the on what on poor him. Antonio is. Because yeah, there probably is a reason why he named it that. Mm-hmm. But he said a lot in it. The first verse was um, him providing background into his upbringing and why he thinks the way he does. And then the second verse, which everyone w- fo- was focusing on, he basically addressed the Kendrick and Drake beef. Right. And said, like, he explained why he backed out. And so there were a lot of mixed reviews. Even me as well, I don't know definitively what I think about it because while I do appreciate that, like, he spoke his truth and, like, he really... And it's his own song. Like, he can... I know there's a... I guess we could start here. There's a lot of people who are saying, like... Yo, it's been like six months. You're over explaining yourself. Have you guys seen that? Like, I've seen a, a lot of that. A lot of yeah. people are like, "What yeah. is J Cole saying? Like, he, why is he even saying anything now, bro? It's done. Like, both. Like, the battle is over. You backed out. Why are you over explaining yourself?" And when I first saw that on Twitter, I thought it was funny. Like, there were there were <laughs> memes of people like like a cartoon or something, and like someone's like screaming into the abyss, and like no one's paying attention. People were like posting those memes, and I thought it was funny. I laughed as a J Cole fan. I even like I laughed at it. But now I'm just like, I mean. It's his own song and he's just getting his shit off and really getting things off his chest. And it's like, it's, it's hip hop. Like he's really like opening up and explaining himself. So I'm like, damn, he can't even like speak his truth yeah. on his own song. I'll you say know? that. Like I saw a lot of people say, oh, why is he putting in the music? Are we that far gone from music that we don't like when artists respond to things in music? Now, if you're upset with the way what he, he said, what he said or where he took it. I'm not mad at that, but mm-hmm. rappers are supposed to put their messages out through the music, yeah. mm-hmm. right? And like, I'm okay with yo, that. Quick uh, little thing. Port Antonio is actually a city in Jamaica. I don't know if there's any re- uh, relevance to it, mm-hmm. but... Port yeah. Antonio is a city in Jamaica. It's That's one of those things where the greats, they oh. leave us little nuggets. But I don't, you, I don't maybe, know. Maybe he recorded it there because the, the cover art did look like he was not in the States. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm not mad at that at all. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. I know. So for me, when I first heard it, I listened to it about a dozen times. I disagree with Parks. In Parks, I love you. Obviously, I've seen Parks mad. Like what he said. Parks is one of the first, like, first people who really embraced me in a real way. Like Aww. Parks instilled so much confidence in me as just a professional individual, somebody in this space. Like, I'm forever in debt to Parks. I don't know if I ever told him that, but whatever, he'll hear this. But I wholeheartedly disagree with Parks. He said he was over the dead president's loop on oh, the podcast. Yeah, I heard him yeah, say I that. that. Dead presidents is one of the greatest loops, I'm one of the greatest samples. I'm down. Wait, you're down with Parks? No, no, no. I'm down with. Oh, pres- I, I was about to say. I'm, wait, I'm, I'm down, no, no, I'm down with dead presidents being played and used whenever. That like, please <laughs> continue to keep that please, alive, please. Because I think there's gonna be a generation who may not even and understand what, what dead presidents yeah. is. You and know not what I'm just saying? that, like that's hip hop. Like dudes used to do the mixtape yeah. culture, get yeah. on somebody else beat. You know Speaking what I'm saying? Speaking of like, that, so talk. the reason why I love the song itself, well, we could dive into what he actually said, but the song yeah. itself, I love listening to it because. Because it really reminded me of like old J. Cole and okay. not just saying as a typical nostalgia thing. He literally did a Dead Presidents 2 on the warm-up. So I'm just like, oh my God, remember like when you first discovered Cole? Like that's what it made me feel like. And just to like put this in there as well, like um, it's a sample of the iconic Dead President sample is A Garden of Peace by Lonnie Listen Smith. It's the piano part. And when you really listen to that song, the original song, it's so like moving it's beautiful it's beautiful but yeah. yeah so that's the real sample so nice. yeah i just wanted to say i disagree with parks on that yeah. um but i do think it's a great song i think mm-hmm. j cole the one thing about j cole and 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 this is the thing that i took away from this song right j cole is challenging hip-hop and hip-hop fans as human beings right Mm. Because what we've never listen, nah, just listen I to see that. Yeah, yeah, I see what he, you're doing. We've we've never seen anything like a J Cole. Okay, I'm we, we it, we've never seen anybody as <laughs> transparent. We've never seen anybody as um, forthcoming <clears throat> to kind of die on a sword for a false cause. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that, 
is J. Cole is a, a rapper's rapper. Yeah. Your MC's favorite MC. Your, your MC's favorite MC's because we understand his pen, you can't question it. His cadence, his delivery, everything about J. Cole says I am and can be number one. But how J. Cole moves is so like, grounded mm -hmm. that it challenges the person who looks at him like he is number one. And so for somebody like me, when I hear this song, the first reaction is, nigga, shut the fuck up, please. <laughs> no, for real. Like, the first reaction is, dude, like, I don't want to hear you talk about the shit anymore. Uh, um, you yeah. bowed out. I'm calling him dramatic, all that stuff. Dramatic. Um, <laughs> you, you're, you're not understanding your position in this position. Like, there's so many things. The first thought is, like, why are you mentioning Drake? Are you subconsciously dissing Kendrick? Like, there's so many initial thoughts. But then when you really break it down yeah. and it's layered... It's like, oh, wait, we've never seen, and this is hard to say in any genre, mm -hmm. but we've never seen this. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing about J. Cole. We've never seen anybody who had the potential, who sold us a false dream of being number one, actually being in this position and saying, no, I, I, I don't want it, but I still feel like I am him. Mm -hmm. We've never seen that. Normally, yeah, when like, you feel like you're him, mm -hmm. you show us that you think that yeah. you're him. Which he has done. He always raps about like I'm the greatest, right? Like he has sp like specifically said like I am the best. So it's not like we're <laughs> just assuming this or just putting that on. He has actually said for the last decade he thinks he's the best. But I think like it, the exact bar that I think where Savon is coming from is. J. Cole said on the song, they stripped me of my spot and now I'm finally free. I feel like you either hate that line or you love that line. I I'm, I'm thinking Alex it. hates I, I hate like it. it because, okay, who should go? It. Okay, the reason why I like it is because he's basically like, um, like I am done chasing this, like, I'm the goal, I'm the goal, and I need everyone to think I'm the goal. And now he finally feels free. He's like, yo, I get, I bowed out, I get that, might have been looked at as embarrassing to you guys but i don't care anymore like i just want to rap and some people thought that was corny some people thought that was dramatic but he's really saying his true thoughts on this song and it's like just because you don't want to get into this bloodbath for like the crown does that make him <laughs> not a great rapper anymore like but see that's why yo, i think he's yeah. challenging hip-hop and, and alex i'm gonna let you go mm -hmm. but that line specifically is why i think he's challenging us as humans and as hip hop fans, because as a human, I can understand, <clears throat> holy shit, you feel like a weight is lifted off of your shoulders. You feel like, oh my God, I, I no longer, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm <laughs> that's crazy. Nah, I get it. The yeah, weight to the crazy. world. I'm just saying, as a yeah, human, word. I can understand because we human first. That we we mm. human first. They call human. Yeah. So I'm finally free. I don't have to like compete. <laughs> this nigga, I don't like this condescending tone, Alex. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I this get nigga, it. This nigga up a hundred million dollars and say he finally free. <laughs> <laughs> Free of the. Uh, oh. when, did, when did he mention money? Oh shit! No, see that's the thing. Free though, of right? the expectation, Alex. Yeah, that he gave to us. Yeah, and now he's grown. He's pushing forty. He's like, you know what? I'm done with all this braggadocious shit. Like, see, see, I'm okay with anybody being grown, right? I mm -hmm. love mat uh, maturation. I love someone evolving and changing, being a better version of themselves. But I hate how he's acting as if wanting to be number one doesn't come with being battle tested. And that's really what I, that's the first thing I fully grasped from this song, right? Though I thought it, not just that, people have been saying, we've been reaching up here, saying if there's any uh, qualms between him and Drake, I guess we weren't reaching. Uh -huh. <laughs> and he really is dying on the hill of, yo, I could be the best, but I don't got to prove to y'all the best. Mm -hmm. You know what it sounded like to me? Hey, yo, I seen you in that cooking competition. Yeah, nah, um... I wasn't in the cooking competition, but this is how you bake a cake. Nah, I ain't getting the cooking competition because the kitchen would have been too hot for me. Mm -hmm. But yo, let me teach you how to bake a cake. And it's like, dog, mm -hmm. this is, you are the last person who should be advising anyone. I, 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 quite frankly, I don't think this is the time to do it. Like I said, I love the fact that he's doing it through the music, through the rap. That's what's up. But bro, just showcase to me that you still want to rap at a high level, which you have. But dog, don't try to turn this as if like Kendrick or Drake mm -hmm. are bad people for the position that they chose, right? Unfortunately, there's competition in everything, right? 
There's competition in sports. There's For sure. competitions in your in your uh, everyday life. Work. Work. This is what I pulled as well, right? Sometimes you gotta fight with your friends. And I think that's healthy. Sometimes you gotta okay. fight. Sometimes you gotta fight with your friends to get to the other side. It could be <laughs> a healthy competition, but his point was, yo, this is this was not just a healthy rap battle. It got very, very nasty. Yeah. So it's like I like the cake cake competition analogy mm-hmm. that you said. It's like but this wasn't just about baking a cake, though. It was maybe it was like a very, very, very dirty competition. He's like, you know what, yo, I, d- I actually don't want to be a part of this, guys. Like, and I, I do agree with you, Alex, where he was being very like, he's advising people on like, oh, you guys just want to click. You know, like the, that part of the song where he's like, you guys just want to click some yeah, views yeah, yeah. and that's why you guys battle. Like that part, I was like, all right, all right. But right. when he said that, it sounded like he was only talking to one party. When he said that line, I think it's about, all both. I, me, when I first right, heard right. it, yeah. it sounded like he was only speaking to Kendrick. He could have been talking to both sides. Mm-hmm. It sounded like he was only talking to Kendrick because after that, the only person he mentioned by name was, was Drake. Drake. Yeah. And he made it a point to say, hey, Drake, I fuck with you. Um, I'm, but he apologized again. If we really <laughs> meant in words, like he damn near apologized to Drake again. Like, yo, I know you supported me. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'll never be ashamed to let you know, like, I'm here for you. Like... He apologized twice. The first time on stage in in this song, it sounds like another subliminal apology to Drake. Yeah, but what's wrong with sparring with your friends? I think this that's wasn't my, a sparring between Drake and Kendrick. I'm, I'm this. It was sparring. It wasn't sparring. It was. They really I, don't like. I each know other. they got deep this down and fight. dirty. It was definitely a fight. This was a fight. I've had to fight people I love, yo. I get it, but Homies, they don't. This, this ain't like, love, though. No, it, like, all right. I'll put it like this. I'll put it like this. It's I'll like relationship like dynamic. Yeah, I, me, my brothers. Right. Mm-hmm. I grew up. I got mad siblings. Me and my brothers were all close in age. One of the things that I've always known, even when we do fight. We, we could be angry. We could hate each other. We could be mad in the moment. One of the things is like an unwritten rule. Yeah. You don't need to punch your brother in the mouth. You nah, can hit him. Sometimes you no, gotta punch no, that nigga. You punch him, body shots. <laughs> yeah. Rib shots. <laughs> yeah. Put him in a chokehold. Yeah. Choke the nigga out like until he's ready <laughs> to be unconscious. Whatever the case may be, mm. there's just certain lines that you don't cross when it's your brother. Right? Like there's certain expectations of fighting with your brother that if he does this, it's clipped. It's clipped. Like Alex, me and you have have got into it. Yeah. If and I that's say, my whole point. If we no. if we if the two of us don't escalate to those points in those mm-hmm. moments to really tell each other how we feel, mm-hmm. then we're never gonna get through it. But they they <laughs> escalated to those points. Mm-hmm. They uh-huh. went past the threshold of, oh, no, nah, this ain't my brother. And so I think J. Cole is trying to play both sides of the fence because he has history with Kendrick. Obviously, there was rumors for years mm. that they were going to do a joint album. Right. And everybody felt like, oh, wait, the Black Friday this joint. makes sense. Mm. They their, their image, their brand, their marketing, their cadence, what they stand for aligns with them doing a joint album. And then all of a sudden we see him with Drake and it's like, wait. The only thing in common that these two dudes have is they're biracial. Yeah. And they started rapping around the same time. (laughs) Outside of that, Drake and J. Cole makes no sense. But when I see Kendrick and J. Cole, that makes all the sense in the world. Mm. Just based on their catalog. Based on what they stand for. And so... I would would say that rap is their arena to, you know, get past their issues and problems. These are the rappers that are, that are at their peak right now, mm-hmm. <clears throat> at the precipice of greatness. This is where they're at right now. So maybe um, a disagreement between you and I might be a conversation, right? Maybe it might be us escalating our voice. But yo, when you showcase this to the world, because now we all in the group chat, mm-hmm. <laughs> and you involved this, you was the mm-hmm. yeah, I, y'all dropped the song. Y'all so. dropped. You called yourself Muhammad Ali. And you was doing it with your bestie. I was doing a Spider-Man meme in the music video. I ain't forget. I'll never forget. Even that song was like <laughs> a friendly kind of competition. And, and, and that's my thing. It right? was friendly. I, I it agree. Was. I, I completely he agree. He embraced but Kendrick and Drake on his verse. One thing I've learned about having friends is that they're all different and they all perceive and receive things differently. Mm-hmm. Right? So I'm sure that he's been with Drake a little bit more these days. Right? So maybe he didn't know how... Kendrick will receive it. I think they should have had a good idea, though, when Kendrick said, nah, I'm not going to be on the song. <laughs> so my whole thing really lies in J. Cole. It is okay to fight your friends. 
I haven't heard anyone say this, and I, it's kind of like I don't know. No, I get what you're saying. You I get like to. your whole like stance is like, yo, healthy competition is good. You can fight. You can really go head to head with Kendrick, and it's okay. It's like, okay. You guys, but like, I feel like that is okay. Like, they really should, and I feel like the world would have loved that. But J Cole realized like there was literally a turning point in the battle. Like after a first person shooter, after um like that. And then when J. Cole saw, like, oh, shit, this is getting dark. They're bringing wives, children, yeah. like, sexual assault allegations into this. And J. Cole knew himself, and he was like, I do not want any parts. I don't care if I'm embarrassing myself by pulling out for the whole world. I'm pulling out. I don't want to do a competition like this. I feel if it. it's specifically, like, wordplay, bars, rapping, like, I feel like J. Cole would have been game. But he's like, I don't want to I don't want to do this. I'm going to apologize to the whole world. Like, I don't give a fuck. I like, know family members who have gotten in the dirt, in the mud, unfortunately, with other members. I'm not saying it's the best way to go about things, but what I will say is certain situations warrant those reactions, okay? And to speak on those family members, a lot of those family members are still okay now, right? So, Cole, just spar, <laughs> especially with you rapping at such a high level. You, I, the only thing I got to say to that, yeah. it's not sparring, it's fighting. Okay, fight. It's, it's, it's been fight. past the Duke point of sparring. Yeah, I agree. This, this is, I agree. It's fighting. This is fighting. For Whatever sure. it is, this is a fight. In, in combat sports, we see all the time, and even in like the NFL, <laughs> like physical sports, we will fight. Yeah. We will do well. You, you can break my leg, and at the end of the game, I'm going to still dap you up because of sportsmanship and understanding the arena that I signed up for. So there's been plenty of time. I was watching it with a friend, right? And my friend will ask me, like, yo, aren't these two teams really big rivals, right? So at the time of this recording, the Bills and the Jets, they just played on Monday night. Yes, they did. That is a very big game for that division, yep. for the, the NFL season. That is a massive game. We have two really great quarterbacks divisional with really game. big egos, divisional games. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of components in that game, right? Yeah. At the end of the game, no matter what the outcome is, both quarterbacks just due to the nature of sportsmanship, will meet and acknowledge each other, right? Yeah. Because, hey, no matter what, your team may hate me, my team may hate you, but this is just what it is in this moment, and this is a part of the nature of the beast. And the sport, absolutely. This is the sport. Absolutely, yeah. Mm. So we are going to acknowledge <clears throat> each other at the end of the game, regardless of the outcome. In hip-hop and rap, it can be a thing right? That can exist. And I think it has existed, which is why you see somebody like a 50 Cent in, in Jadakiss, a 50 Cent in Fat Joe. Jadakiss and, and Beans. I'm, I'm, you, and I just and saw Jadakiss on Beans food truck helping him serve food. And I'm, I'm using that because in that moment, right? Like yeah. they understood this is the sport. This right. is the nature of the beast. Right. <laughs> and they said some of the craziest things. And I also want to say it's also the climate of the time. The timing of that battle of those beefs, it allowed for people to say things where, yeah, you said this is disrespectful. I'm going to say what I got to say and then we can move on. Today, everybody is hypersensitive. So if you call me a pedophile, <laughs> right? If you call me a pedophile today, compared to you calling me that 20 years ago, it just ages a little bit differently. It's not the same. Yeah. It's just not the same. It's not. Because we're in a different arena. It's funny. You want I, me to get in my nerve bag? I can. You can. But it's funny because I think J. Cole would have, if he, if he decided to participate, I think he would have had the least of the, the bad things uh, like being the said baggage? about him. Baggage. I don't or know. Or just the I, things being said about him. I don't know because maybe <clears throat> okay, that, they that they, is why he pulled out because he's like. He knows his dirty shit. <laughs> and he knows he maybe allegedly has some very dark things that he has successfully kept away from us. And he's like, that's why I'm saying like he was self-aware enough to know like. I get it. I don't want to do this. I, I respect like your point of like, yo, please spar. That's what we want our hip hop greats to do. But you can, you also like can control that and be like, I don't want it to get like that. When you were talking about your family members, I had to get down and dirty and be like, he could, he could have been like, I don't want it to go that far. Actually. I'm willing to, to literally apologize and have all these hip hop peers tell me that I'm not hip hop enough. And I, I agree. Like if you're a hip hop purist, like you will never understand why J Cole pulled out. Like that's just something you don't do, but I don't know. You could really control it and be like, I don't want it to get like this. They would have called him biracial and that uh, we never see his wife and kids. 
No, they might have been, been bad things, Alex. There might have been really bad things. I believe, hey, yeah. we don't know. I'm not taking it off the table, but I can identify with some things. I'm like, dog, you could have went down that line. And I'm not saying these two things are true. <laughs> Me? But listen, but listen, I'm not saying the two things that, the two examples that I'm going to give you, I'm not saying that they're true, yeah. but these are the things that were mentioned. And maybe J. Cole didn't even want to be involved because he knew that Drake was going to be labeled a pedophile and Kendrick was going to be labeled a wife beater. Right? Mm -hmm. Those are two things. If you go to, and Alex, you, you are the perfect person to talk to yeah. because you understand politics. I do. And when I say politics, there's certain things on people's names that you cannot erase. No. So if you know somebody who has been accused of doing anything with somebody that's underage, that is going to stick with that person for the rest of their life, no matter what they do, no matter where they are. There's certain labels that get put on you. <laughs> That can just they 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 just stick no matter what. I feel you. I feel I don't know. It's just with J. Cole, I don't see an individual who We like, don't know is, J. Cole. You we don't right. know what he does right. in from, his personal from, life. From what he's just showcased. Like he just comes off as a dude that's like, I'm riding my bike, I don't have to go out with security. Um, things don't necessarily phase me like everyone else. I'm not as vain as everyone else. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I can't speak to his insecurity levels. But, but do you know why we think of him as this peaceful guy who rides his bike the time all the time? Because he doesn't like getting into messy shit like this. Right. That's why we think of him but this way. We, and, but he did. He has gotten into messy shit. No, before. he hasn't. Well, not did like he? this. He's not never like this. Not been like this magnitude. Did we, messy. did we? Did we forget about the Diddy nightclub? That's not messy. That's, that's a one off. Absolutely messy. That is a one off. Right, you're moving the goalposts. You. That's still that's messy. That's not messy. It's absolutely messy. How getting getting punched in the nightclub Alleg while trying to defend your man's allegedly allegedly is messy, bro. That's, that's messy. Not, that's not messy. That's oppie shit. What are you talking about? That's you see your ops in the club and niggas get a crack, and that's mad messy. That's not messy. He could have been off. He could have been off one night. Wasn't that in defense of someone though? That's my whole point. That's not. I think it was in defense of Kendrick. Yeah. It was. Yeah. But again, I don't believe that messy. That's messy. That's messy, not even his own business. Messy is a narrative. <laughs> I, I think, don't think that's messy. That's me defensive. Messy has a narrative. Messy has a tail attached to the word messy. Yeah, like it always right? happens. Getting like, it popping in a club ain't messy. No, hold on. I, hold on. <laughs> I'm sorry, can I? So, like, yeah. let's say we're all, I feel like we're all, you know, we conduct ourselves well. If right. we're in the club and I someone try. threatened me, <laughs> I kill him. Exactly. If, so if you guys defended God, me, so I'm not like, guys, we got into mess. It's like, no, you had to do what you had to do in that moment. I, I, feel, I feel like that's but, not messy. But people don't grant people like Chris Brown that type of grace when he gets Wait. into ordeals. I'm oh. just being honest. Like, there are other people Wait, who which... live a certain type of lifestyle. Mm -hmm. When they when they outside, they shake it. When they fight, it's, when they fight okay. it's, it's considered messy. But I now, yeah, it's like. I love Chris Brown. I love Chris Brown, too. <laughs> that's not a good example. Oh, you ever heard of the Yeah, he's been through a lot of shit. That's not a good example. I get it. But there are other people who go outside and get in the fights and they call it's it messy, messy. Yeah, yeah, yeah like but yeah. In, in that instance with j cole that's not messy all right to you i think it's messy if you get into a fight over another nigga <laughs> that's allegedly not, I'm, I'm that's messy i'm defending my man in that moment it doesn't have any preconceived notion and it doesn't have anything any lasting effects to it so it's not in my opinion that situation not is not messy because not this happened in the moment again mm -hmm. if somebody were to walk through these doors Right? If somebody were to walk through these doors and, and, and press Reggie and we handle, we de escalate the situation, that's not messy. We handle it in a moment. But now, now, if we go out and every single time we go out, Reggie's like, hey guys, so there's this girl <laughs> who really hates me for whatever reason, mm -hmm. and we always show up to that girl's spot. That's messy. I get it. Like, reoccurring. That's, you get what I'm saying? I, like, I there's a history it, there that allows that to be messy. If it's in the moment, if you my man, then a nigga pop on you, and I defend you, but see, that's not messy. But not everybody knows the details of things, Savon. We don't. That'd be my thing. So, like, from just the outside looking in, someone could label that as messy. Someone could label him calling out Kanye on false prophets as messy. If they wanted to, they could be like, yo, Kanye was minding his business, chilling over mm -hmm. there. Here you go talking about him when he wasn't thinking about you. But we don't look at it like that. We look at it as art. My thing is, is like, yo, there's different ways where people can show that. Yeah. So so with this song, Port Antonio, yeah. how do we feel as of today? Because personally, for me, I felt like, one, I'm not with the crowd that said, oh, he shouldn't have talked about it. Oh, he's getting tired. I want you to express yourself through your music, through your art. Also, it's not like an unsolicited opinion. It literally did involve him. Like the beef was with the three of them at first, and yeah. then he bowed out, and then it was the two of them. Like, but in the beginning, it really did involve him, and he's just you know saying his truth. I do agree. Like, 
at this point, think, go for it. You sure? Yeah. I think his next album is going to be phenomenal. I know he, J. Cole knows and realizes how much is on the line for him. It I, has to be, Alex. I, I think it's going to be, be, and you know, you know, you're more of a Cole fan than I am, but I, I think it's going to be phenomenal. Honestly, I'll say this, I think it's, it might be the second best project he puts out in his whole discography. I, I I'm going to go on so. and let me say it. I think so. I hope it is. You got to put it You got to put it all out on the line. There's now. so much writing for him. And there's for so sure. much writing for Not just like, oh, we need good music from him, but just like his reputation and a lot of like his core hip hop, hip hop purist fans like really disappointed in him mm -hmm. and how he was moving this year. Someone like me who kind of just like accepts him for who he is. He's done some problematic shit. Like he said some, yeah. some canceled terms in his songs. He mm -hmm. said some weird <laughs> lyrics. Like I, but I just, you know, I don't like, I just, I'm I just, I'm just taking him for what he is. Like, yeah. I don't know. Like, I, I just respect the fact that he wants to put out the song. He want, he really wants to say what he did, and me kind of not being the, uh, like, okay, let me not say that. So, him kind of taking a step back and not wanting the beef to escalate to something so extreme that you know it might get violent, it might get disrespectful. I. I don't mind that. I don't mind that he did that. Like, I know it looks funny mm -hmm. in hip hop and the grand scheme of things, but I don't mind, you know, just him wanting to be himself and like uh, remove himself. I'm cool with that. I don't I'm mind. Sorry. I like, don't mind it if you're not trying to be the best. But he just said, that's why I like the line that you hated, that he's finally free of this expectation. I get it's annoying because he's been so braggy. I don't believe him. I don't that's believe true. Him. That's true. But, but I do not okay. believe. I don't think he thinks he's free. But just because because he, he still wants to be number one. <laughs> does he though? No, no. But does he though? Because he did so. for the past ten years. Yeah. So we're not wrong for thinking that. Right. But he's literally telling us like, yo, I finally feel free now, and like he's still a phenomenal rapper. Just because he doesn't want to be number one doesn't make him a bad rapper. When like, he says things like, "I wouldn't have lost the battle," <sighs> duh. <Dog. laughs> <laughs> that makes me think like you. Whatever ego or pride is still left in there from he your, had to slide that in that there. Yeah, yeah. that you have it's still in there, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you have to mask it with yo. I'm mature. I've grown from this. I didn't want to lose the homie. The mere fact that you had to mention, I think I wouldn't have lost the battle. I would have lost the homie. That means you still think you better than them. Hmm. Some people, I saw some people interpret that line differently, where he wasn't mm -hmm. literally saying like yo, I would have won, but he was saying more like it's not about the me losing the battle it was more for me about me losing Self? a friend oh, okay so well this i agree with alex but i'm saying people interpreted that differently he mm -hmm. wasn't literally talking about like oh by the way i would have won but mm -hmm. he's talking about i weigh my friendship way more than the outcome of this battle this is one of the things that i feel like elliot um i feel like elliot may have been the, the been the only person that really talked about this wilson but, yeah elliot wilson is that artists aren't doing interviews. So we don't know how they really feel. All we know is what they put into the music. And so when J. Cole drops a song like this, and it seems like it's pretty transparent, it seems like he's being really vulnerable and yeah. what it is that he's saying, that's all we have to kind of go by because the only people doing interviews today are the people who are trying to create a fan base, create a moment, uh upcoming artists or artists trying to salvage their careers right mm -hmm. and when i say that i want to give examples and i'm just going to say names you can kind of place what position they're in but i've recently seen interviews of tyler i've recently seen interviews from the baby um How's it going? And those are the, the, the two artists that really come to mind when it comes to being interviewed, because mm -hmm. I think they're viewed in a certain light, but at the same time, they have a certain prestige or a certain cachet to where maybe they don't have to do interviews, but they are doing interviews. But our heavy hitters aren't really doing interviews unless they're doing like streaming. We saw Nicki Minaj on Kai Sinat's stream. Yeah. I don't think she needed that. She's Nicki Minaj at the end of the day. But I do believe that is a controlled environment. Mm -hmm. And I know we had conversations about Kai Sinat on this podcast. I, I do not want any <laughs> smoke. I, I promise you. I'm I'm surprised surprised you I get it. Watch it. <laughs> AMP, all of y'all, y'all got it. Watch but it, watch it. I got to be honest, when I see Kai Sinat in bed with McDonald's, when I see Kai Sinat doing interviews Long with John time. Cena, when I see yeah. Kai Sinat doing interviews with uh, Kevin Hart, right? When I see Kai Sinat and some of the streamers doing some of the things that they're doing, 
this is a controlled environment. And I understand the smoke and mirrors make it seem like, oh my God, this is so organic. Like this is a sleepover. John Cena's here and he's just <laughs> hanging out. Like, no, this, this is strategic and this is mm -hmm. planned. And everything that's coming at John Cena, he is prepared for because there's an outline, there's an agreement that this is never going to get to a certain point to where you're uncomfortable. Like it's not going to yeah. go left. That's, see, that's the thing I didn't like about this. It's not going to go left, right? In an effort of trying to defend himself, he tried to flip it as if Drake and Kendrick were wrong with their approaches and their decisions. But when we talk about his approach and decision, oh, we, everybody needs to understand. No, man, we all have different walks and lanes in life to get to a better place. Uh, God is still working on a lot of us. Mm -hmm. So to act like he was so holier than thou, like, oh, yeah, like, I could never. It's like, dog, bro, like. Don't, don't do that. It's not the time for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you made a decision and they made a decision. Mm -hmm. I don't think there needs to be a right or wrong in that. Now, granted, did he take maybe a bit a bit of a more peaceful route? Mm -hmm. Sure. For sure, yeah. I'm not mad at that. Absolutely. We could, we could do whatever we want in this life, right? Mm -hmm. but, try to, but to try to frame it as if they're wrong in how they responded, no, man. Maybe Drake and Kendrick needed to do that for themselves. Mm -hmm. Whoever you think won, won or lost, as artists to recreate themselves as individuals and to go to that next point in their careers, et cetera. Maybe they felt like they had to go through that, but don't speak for them. And yeah. as competitors. <laughs> and as competitors, because I right. Think that's the one thing. And this is why J. Cole is so challenging for me. Bruh. Because J. Cole is one of, and I'm sure there's other artists, I don't want to discount anybody who has come before J. Cole that have exercised their right to be a human. And I think J. Cole is exercising his right to be a human at the highest level. Right. And so with that being said, the reason that J. Cole challenges me as a human, as and as a hip hop fan is mm -hmm. because I understand what he is doing as a human. As a human, whether we're friends or not, I respect you. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. And so I think in, 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 in the industry, artists, entertainers, they use the word friend very loosely. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't know. And I can't prove this to be true. But I don't believe that J. Cole is necessarily friends with Kendrick Lamar or Drake. I agree. I think that they are forced in their position because they are the quote unquote big three. I think their skill set, I think their fan base, I think their marketability, I think their success um, all ties them to being in a pool in a class of their own, which because they've worked with each other in the past, because they all have had a similar come up, yeah. have allowed them to be associated with each other in a certain way. And because they may, they probably do all have relationships. I think it's easier to throw the word friend out there because it's convenient. Mm -hmm. You see how you were able to make that comparison, right? Mm -hmm. Between being a human and Cole is not only a human, but a human and an artist, right? Mm -hmm. That's the thing. He's an alien. Him, Kendrick, Drake, these are aliens we're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. So if he wants, if J. Cole wants to treat, uh, teach the rest of us regular people lessons, all right, cool, I'm down, because we human. Mm -hmm. But in that realm, in that world, mm -hmm. dog, y'all are aliens. That is how y'all get through it. We, we regular people. You right, Savon. Uh, the rest of us are humans. And, and y'all jobs and y'all career and what y'all do, that is alien shit right there. Like, now. that's the standard. Yeah. And, and he didn't meet the standard, so it's like, all right, what do you do? Right. Kind of, okay. Different if we all rapped as human beings, and now it's like, okay, yeah. now we have two things to juggle. No, They're like just exceptional. Human. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, you're an alien. I think just like, just talking about like J. Cole being human. And you know, I'm just noticing, by the way, everything I've said during this segment, I definitely seem like a J. Cole apologist now. It's fine. <laughs> if people are going to like come at me for one thing, no, and I, I want it to be that. People but like, I just feel like with J. Cole being human, like people have definitely been pointing out, well, we don't buy this because you made seven minute drill and then you retracted it and then you did the diss, like the diss sounded crazy. And I get that. And he, I think he deserves to be vilified for that. But I feel like he made a mistake, like mm -hmm. seven minute drill and the way he moved in the beef, um, releasing that song, deleting it. I do think that was just a mistake. Like he didn't know how to navigate it in the moment. He retracted it. He literally apologized for it. He made a mistake that he apologized for. I feel like, and people are just really hanging on to that, which we should as rap fans, but like, I feel like that's okay, man. Like, he's human. That's why you guys keep saying, like, the word human. That just really reminded me of that. Like, I wanted to say that because it's like, J. Cole, I feel like I, I think, he made I think, a mistake. I think even, see, I'm crazy. I think that's manipulative. 
him trying to him trying to reduce it to hey come on y'all be the bigger person it's like dog we all want to be the bigger people in life we all want to mature and think you are a rapper in the rap game why Mm -hmm. are you trying to move the goalposts and make this something it's not bro that like it's so confusing to me i get what you're saying be a better person in your real life how about that rap we talked about this last week rap all this is wwe is entertainment entertain and then be a good person in your regular life i've, I've heard he did like I, from credible sources like rob yeah. markman like he has said like oh no they have talked in real life kendrick and jake hall but like Dope. so it's like is he being manipulative or is he just saying like okay guys i've learned like this is how i feel about it now like i regret the way i moved mm-hmm. like is mm-hmm. he saying that or is he being manipulative i'm, o- I'm okay my fault I'm, you- I'm okay with him explaining why he didn't want to do something because mm-hmm. again i'm not j cole i can't mm-hmm. think for him it's when he starts to speak for others and how he tries to demean both Kendrick and Drake about the decisions they made. That's where I go left. I'm like, all right, you're losing me, bro. Uh, who are you? Okay. Like, who are you? Like, I do want to move on really quick. Who are you to quick, tell me? But I want y'all to think about this question really. Like, this is the, the last thing I want to leave on this topic. Yeah. Out of Drake and Kendrick Lamar, right? Based yeah. on J. Cole's actions, who forgives J. Cole? Who embraces J. Cole after this? Because I don't see a way where Drake can fully embrace J. Cole after this because of in the moment, in the, the, the height of the battle, you made it a point to say, hey, I'm neutral, right? And Joe, Joe said this before, and I do think it's very true in some instances where you can't always be neutral. Sometimes you <laughs> Yo. do have to just say, hey, yeah. this is a side. Well, right? That is a good point because I'm, I'm thinking about if I had a very deep rooted problem with somebody and my best friend was like, sorry, girl, I'm neutral. That would kind of bother me. Like, I that would, would want you to. Can't okay, I get that. I get that. I get that. Okay. In the height of the battle, <laughs> on, on the stage at Dreamville Fest or whatever festival it was. J. Cole came out and said, hey, guys, I don't want to do this. I'm sorry. I'm neutral. It was reported we had Mandy on the podcast. She was at uh, OVO. <laughs> no, it was Dreamville Fest. Dreamville, right? Dreamville yeah. Fest, yeah, yeah. Mandy was at Dreamville Fest. She said her account was that Drake was in the building. We heard other people say that Drake was there to perform alongside J. Cole. We, I, I can't confirm it. I wasn't there. Right. But if the rumors are true that... Drake was in the building and we saw their relationship. We know that they were hanging out for the last three years. So if I'm Drake and I see J. Cole get on stage and say, wait, hold up. These guys are beefing. I don't want any parts of this. Please, Kendrick, diss me. If I'm inviting somebody to diss me, (laughs) I'm almost waving a white flag and extending an olive branch as saying, yo, man, I fuck with you, my dog. I'm sorry I did this. It's your turn. Man, he said he could chin check him too. <laughs> you, 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 I'm so glad you said that because that was that was funny. He was like, "Yo, Kendrick, you could beat me in the face right here, real quick. I deserve it." Right. Like, like, so if I'm Drake and I see that, I'm like, "Wait, hold up. What the fuck is going on?" Like, and I thought now, you're my friend. Yeah, yeah. A few months later, when I drop a song, finally acknowledging everything that happened over the last few months. Yeah. And then I hear him say, hey, yo, Drake, I really love you, my dog. I can never, like, discredit anything you did for me, my dog. Like, And now when I hear him coming back and he's doing almost the exact same thing for Drake that he did for Kendrick, it's like, all right, you really trying to play in the middle. Yeah. At some point, he really is. Like, you got to, like, gotta, you, you, gotta you, pick you, a you side. Gotta, like, and maybe not pick, pick a side. Just stand. Yeah. yeah, just pick yourself and stand on it. Yo, he, this is why you my nigga. Yes, <laughs> yes, I'm with pick you, bro. It comes up as he's, he's conflicted. Y'all never been conflicted like, damn, nah, I, like I, I could do and this. And I ain't never been that I, big, so I can't talk to we, I've been conf- I've been conflicted, but it's like, if I added fuel to the fire, I know the part I played in that. Yeah. But he is owning up to the part he played I in it, no? I did, yeah. Hmm. It's a, and again, and we could talk about this conversation for the next four hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But this is why I started the conversation by saying, J. Cole has challenged me mm-hmm. and has challenged hip hop, not only as fans, but as human beings, because he has put himself in a position to where he has to choose. Like in a video game, you have to either choose A or B. Yeah. Whatever your controls are, it may be X or square. Whatever your controls are, you got to press a button to make a decision. Yeah. J. Cole is facing that in real time, but he has to make a decision whether I want to compete 
Or do I want to choose this road that hasn't even really been discovered by any other rapper of this caliber? He's literally having an internal fight with his talent and his conscience. Exactly. He said he let Nas down. And Nas would never do this. Never. Hove would never do this. Pac and Big would like. And he's not fully the, innocent. The people like. <laughs> he's not. He's not. He's and not. maybe he doesn't realize the yeah. air that he's in. Because know. when you're a fan of something, sometimes you don't realize it. Like. There's a lot of times we meet people who fuck with the podcast. And again, obviously our affiliation being on the Joe Budden podcast and having that history and having that knowledge and, you know, the era of the Joe, Rory and Maul podcast, that's a thing. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people look at us and be like, oh shit, what's going on, man? Like, and, then, and me, I'm just going to take a piss in the bathroom. Yeah. Nigga. It's last <laughs> lap. Like, leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> like, yeah, I get it. You might be a fan of that time period yeah, yeah. and my name may be attached to that, but mm -hmm. I don't always so, wear that. To answer your question about who I think would embrace Cole first, I think it's Kendrick. Um, I don't. I do. I think he's he's still throwing jabs in it. Did we hear the Mike, another Michael Jackson reference? Mm -hmm. are, are we, the are red we, jacket. Are part? we still reaching? Mm -hmm. Are we still reaching, y'all? It's like after a while, this can't be coincidental. How many times are you going to keep referring to yourself as Michael Jackson, who we had as 1A? We know Drake has been calling himself 1A. You know what I mean? It's like you're poking at bed, but you're running around saying, "No, oh, I want peace." It's like, dog, it's weird. It's weird. Mm -hmm. You gotta. It's weird. It. It's been fun. Huh. But I like what you said about he's battling between his talent and his conscience. You said, Absolutely. and then Pierre also said, "Yo, he's conflicted." I feel like my position is, I feel like that's okay because he's human and he's navigating this mm -hmm. crazy battle. In the same breath, I do think he deserves all the critiques he's getting, like all the that. backlash, all the. All the slander, I do think he deserves all of it, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> the Billboard Hot 100, um, for the first time in a very long time, does not incorporate any hip-hop or rap music. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's the first time since uh, Kendrick's Not Like Us fell out of the 10th slot. And I think a lot of conversation around this is, let me just read some of the names, right? At one, Shabuzi. Uh, at two, Billie Eilish. Three, Post Malone. Four, Sabrina yeah. Carpenter. Five, Lady, Lady Gaga. Gaga. I think you guys are kind of seeing what we're getting at. Damn. And it kind of seems as if it's being whitewashed a bit. A lot of the conversations thrown around this was, is this because of the battle or mm. how much do we need a person that's consistent as Drake? Right? Like... If it's one thing. No, nah, I think I think these charts, they always kind of pull a wool over your eyes. Uh-huh. I think everything has its moment. Life is a reflection of cycles. And so there's going to be a cycle where hip-hop dominates the charts, and then there's going to be cycles where pop dominates. Like, I don't think this is anything to be alarmed over. You don't I think do. it's strategic with everything being downsized no. and the music labels and pro and specifically the hip hop yeah. departments and R and B There's departments. A lot, of, a lot of upheaval. I don't think that because I think really? a lot of the hip hop artists are making microwave music, and now we're finally seeing a reflection of that. I mean, that, not necessarily. I feel like they've been making microwave music for a long time, mm -hmm. but it's been marketed and promoted in a way as to where it feels grander. Mm -hmm. So that's what I mean. I feel like this feels as if we can feel the absence mm -hmm. of the people in those chairs that help hip hop music. So I'm thinking about some of the people who would be within that top 10 on Billboard, right? I'm just thinking Billboard. I'm not thinking yeah. street anthems. I'm not thinking the club. Nah, I'm Big thinking Boy. Billboard, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, we got Drake. Mm -hmm. Drake is whatever he's been doing hasn't been connecting for whatever yeah. reason it just has not been connecting we're supposed so to get some of us let's remove Drake it's from top 10 obviously Kendrick Lamar not like us mm -hmm. it had his moment it's clearly faded away it's no longer in the top 10 it's at 11 is that 11 I, all right cool time it's, is recording, yeah. it's still right there mm -hmm. it's still right there mm -hmm. let's talk about J. Cole J. Cole has never been a consistent top 10 billboard chart I think he's somebody who's more tapped in with the culture, somebody who has a, a very elaborate skill set, but he's never been somebody that the charts really vibe with, right? Mm -hmm. Then let's talk about some of the others. Let's talk about a young thug. Young thug, he ain't been here. Right, young sure. thug is somebody who's been in the top 10 billboards just off of his features with the Camille Cabello's, um, his pop songs. Like He's been somebody who's been able to kind of transform into that, right? right, right. Then I think of a future. Future. I think Future has his moments, but he's not consistently in the top 10, maybe unless he's linked up with a Drake. Or oh, when he right? puts out an album. When though. he puts out an album. Yeah. But like, 
everybody is making such disposable music. Again, I, I, I mentioned the Young Thugs. I also want to mention somebody like a Juice World, who I think would have been always in the top 15, top 10 when he was putting out music. He's no longer here with us, right? Like, mm -hmm. there's just certain artists, and I think now the times are catching up with the music industry to where hip hop, people aren't really prioritizing it as a craft. I agree, but a lot of that is people aren't prioritizing as a craft, but it's a reason why these artists get with these big labels. They make you look more visible, right? And to your point, a lot of this pop music is kind of here to stay, right? Mm -hmm. Like a Teddy Swim joint, oh, yeah. that's been buzzing. He's got two on there, uh, top 25. Top he's, 20, he's in the top 25, you see that? Twice, yeah. Sabrina Carpenter, we know what that's about, et cetera. Like, these are pop stars. Pop mm -hmm. music plays frequently and a lot, especially when it's a hit. Mm -hmm. But- like a Glorilla, like a TGIF. This is this is kind of where they where they would come I, through. I love Glorilla. Yeah, I really do. I think she is. I think she's what in the thirties right now. People thought Meg Thee Stallion would have been, should have been, could have been, whatever the case may be. I love Glorilla. I, I have nothing bad to say about her. Right. But I do think about translating into mainstream media. I think the big three that we have in that light would be a Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj, she's torn. She ain't worried about putting out no music right now. She's right. making money on the tour. She's going crazy. She's yeah. doing a thing. She's a legacy act who also have the luxury of having current fans. So Nicki, I don't expect her to be in the top 10 every week. Mm -hmm. Cardi B, Cardi B ain't huh. dropped no music. But the only time we talk about Cardi B That's is awesome. when, you know, she's in some bullshit yeah. or when yeah. she drops a single. Yeah. Like, she doesn't have any lasting power today because she's just not dropping music. Mm -hmm. And then Meg Thee Stallion, Meg, she's super marketable. I think Meg Thee Stallion is a walking commercial. For mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. She is. I see her with the NFL players. I'm probably going to see, see her with the NBA players mm -hmm. on the commercials. You see all that. But the music is just not resonating with results. And so all of our stars, Travis Scott, I think people are tired of Travis Scott. I think the smoke and mirrors are wearing off on Travis Scott. A few weeks ago, he dropped the Days Before Rodeo mixtape. It was number one. Oh. Apparently, it sold like 400,000 units. <laughs> and and then dropped. the very next week, he was no longer in the Billboard <laughs> yeah. Top 100. See, like, boy. Things yeah. like that. Like We're no longer stupid. The consumer is smarter today. Yeah. And so all of these people who we would assume to be in that top 10, they're not in there, not because they aren't talented or because they don't have the music or the catalog, whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. but they're not in the top 10 because they aren't putting out top 10 music. As great as Drake is, yeah. nothing that he's put out this year is worthy of a top 10 slot. Not but mad at that. Kendrick packed them up though. So after that, it's, it's hard to put out stuff where people will start to actually like still tune in. Kendrick changed That's the perspective tough. of a lot of people when it came to Drake. Real that talk. is true. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people, they look at it completely differently. And I get your your point about the legacy acts not being up there, but what about the new acts, right? Like there are new acts on the Billboard Top 10 here. Sabrina Carpenter's, the Shot Boozies. Um, shit, Sabrina Carpenter's here twice. Chappelle Rowan, Teddy Swims. These are new artists, yeah. right? So it's like, what genre? I, I, I already intro with that. The pop. Yeah. Uh, country. 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 Yeah, for sure. But hip hop was always more popular than country. People, we, <laughs> I think people, labels, executives, they aren't investing in those acts anymore. That's what I, oh, so we saying the same No, we thing. are. Okay, we are. bet. We're saying bet. the same thing. Bet. But I just think we got to break it down into layman's terms for people who may not really understand why. Right. You get what I'm saying? Sure. Like, why? aren't we talking about the Victoria Monet's in this same breath? Why but are we think talking about do you, But do you guys think those label execs actually really gave a fuck <laughs> if, it was, if the song's quality was amazing or if they just had somebody that was popular and that they could market? Yeah, I think the popularity and the marketing definitely took over more than- That's always the been their yeah. thing. Yeah, like taking an artist who the song might be okay, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'm sure when, when Lil Uzi put an EXO tour like people were like, what the fuck? <laughs> but they saw a look, they saw a dude with a ton of charisma, personality, and he was super marketable. Mm -hmm. And the song, I think, reached number one on the pop billboard. Yo, know, y'all can fact check me if I'm wrong. But that's what I think is missing, right? Like, yeah, you know, even for as as many times as Meg the Stallion has gone top five, when she dropped like Mamushi. Mama Sushi? Mama Sushi. 
That's what it's called. Oh, oh that's yeah. that shit uptown and Dyke. Mama <laughs> Sushi. My mama hush Oh, y'all yeah, know Mama Sushi? Y'all yeah, don't know about that shit. Uh, I, yeah, about, yeah, go I know about Mama Sushi. Now, you don't know about Mama <laughs> yes, Sushi. Yes, I do. <laughs> that's in the X. Chill out. What you doing over there? She do it over there. That's one of my. You know nah, I, mean? I know. Like, I was surprised that that didn't really like hit for as long as some I agree. Of her other stuff did. You know I, what I mean? Especially with how diverse. That's a great point, Pete. Yeah. Especially with how diverse a record like that for is. Sure. And the money that's behind her. Yes. Yeah. The person she had featured on, I think he's from one of those famous groups out there. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not surprised. I think in a year and a half, in two Chima. years, yeah. the, the, the market will shift and right. then the hip hop artists will be back into the forefront. Um, because right now, I, I I think, and maybe, and I don't know if this is a domino effect from Diddy. Yeah. Because that could also be the thing. Let's go back to the roots. Let's go back to the foundation. There are a lot of executives. There are a lot of people who may be trying to lay low and not mm. really be out there with the whole Diddy effect. Because the That's Diddy effect point. is real. We point. haven't seen it yet, yeah. but we all know it's coming. Right. Yeah, yeah. Unless Diddy <laughs> goes out like Jeffrey Epstein, which none of us wishes or hopes, or maybe some of y'all do, but <laughs> the overarching theme, like, right, we don't put that on it. We don't wish death on anybody. Yeah, for right? sure, nah. But a lot of people may be trying to get out of the way of that freight train because it's coming. It's coming. Yeah. It's, it's just one of those things that are inevitable. So I'm going to relegate my position so that I don't draw attention to me. Mm. And I'm going to allow the genre to suffer because of that. And again, I don't know. I don't want to put a name on any bullet because I don't have that information. Yeah. But I don't think there is any coincidence in hip hop starting to kind of flail class. out a little bit, yeah. right. dissolve a little bit. I agree. With the correlation of, oh, the, one of the biggest people. Because the thing about the Diddy situation is it wasn't just artists. Yeah. Executives. It was also executives, allegedly politicians, mm-hmm. allegedly people of influence, people behind the scenes. Yeah. Like, this is why the music industry, this is what we thought the music industry was kind of fucking built on. The yeah. infrastructure of the music industry was the nightmares of the music industry yeah. were people like allegedly Diddy, Baby Oil, Puffy, <laughs> Lubricant, Horse Tranquilizer, <laughs> Jim, Jim. Like, GSB, GSB, <laughs> like, that's what it was built off of. How you know about that? Huh? How you know about that? Uh, GSB? I, I, I read the report you read. Yeah, they GSB, yeah, that shit. So <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I got to say with, yeah. with that whole situation. We'll see where it lands. No, nah, that's, a, that's a good point because hip hop, you know, someone as profound as, uh, as Diddy, you know, you would think that everything that he's done up until this point, yeah. everyone's involved, entrenched. Right. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, 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 I actually never thought of that. The fact that like it's it takes on so many tentacles. Listen to this. So the point to where, where oh, this weekend just passed. like BT Award weekend and, and then like the past two, they just didn't feel right because there was no motion, there was no parties. Hey, talking about him as the, the, the artist, the, the person, yeah. right? How and how monumental and how important he was to the culture because I, I I said Jermaine, I just there's no party every year. <laughs> Yo, bow. Yo. Dude Bad. had the he had the fed, and you feel it. It's like a whole. It's like damn, we we ain't going. He was just such a gatekeeper for him. The 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 liquor in the the clubs, the 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 mo. Like he was everything hip hop. Bad. You got to read the room, homie. Don't, yeah. See, he got it. <laughs> not me. He got it. Like though, <laughs> you got to read the room, and he's not saying nothing that people don't know. Yeah. But it's like though, you got to know. Been the one to say it. Yeah. Like, come on. <laughs> it's time and place for it. Yeah. Like yeah, you're <laughs> like, right. People aren't trying to party as much. To yeah. say Vaughn's point, they might be in hiding. So that was about what I was talking about <laughs> the absence of Diddy. Yeah. And again, going back to reading the room, not really understanding what it is like. Mm-hmm. This isn't really the time for saying that. Yeah. Not, yeah. Not, not, at, all. At, all. not at all. Not at all. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck R- with Donnell Rollins. Yeah, yeah, that's my guy. I fuck with Donald. Mad funny. I believe Donald Rollins picture? may be the funniest <laughs> yeah. nigga on earth. He o- there. OD. He no, no, there. I'm OD. not. No, no. Yeah, Listen, there. bro. I promise you, I will put money on this. <laughs> Donnell Rollins, like naturally, like without the, trying, he is the funniest <laughs> sure. person on earth. Yeah. Nah. You saw his Breakfast Club interview. Most I saw. Recent? I, I see watched all everything that <laughs> he I see all of them. I seen him He's with Diddy on Diddy's lap. lap. In like, his, I've yeah. seen it. Like sometimes it there is bad. a time and a place <laughs> for everything, and I think Bow Wow has Look. been exceptional to not reading the room. No, I completely. It agree. is. It's yeah. his trademark. <laughs> just not really understanding the dynamic of just what is happening. He's just talking to talk. <laughs> yeah. So like when I see him talk, like, and again. It's one of those things where if I have a personal relationship with someone, 
I can't necessarily speak to the things that they do when mm. I'm not in the room. I sure. agree. I agree. Right? I can see what so saying. maybe that's Bow Wow's stance where it's like, yo, I only know Diddy for throwing these phenomenal parties. Mm. I only know Diddy for having a great time because there are a few different type of Diddy parties, right? There's three different types from of Diddy what parties. I, yeah, from what I've from heard. From what we've read, from what we heard. Oh, three. If you don't get the invite to the up, upstairs or... Past a oh, certain time. Oh, y'all was in the group chat. From then, what they say. Oh, no, no. y'all was in the group chat. You was in the, don't do that. You want me to expose you? You want me to expose you? He said that's the Do it, do it. Expose you. Do it, expose you. Do it, do it, do it. You sure? Go we do don't it. got no edits. We can't edit Fuck, nothing this episode. Do you want me to <laughs> expose you? Yeah, do it. We'll I don't care, nigga. A few years ago, Talk Alex and I okay. were having a conversation in the back room, control room of the Joe Budden podcast. Okay. Me and Alex, you know, guys in the locker room. Hey, man, what's going on? How you doing with the love life, right? Alex comes to me. Hey, yo, man. Shorty right here. <laughs> oh, okay. What? Oh, Shorty right here. She had a Diddy party. I'm like, wait, hold up, eh? Oh shoot. This oh. is years ago. It's years mm. ago, right? I didn't know well, you, but you did. I did it. You, you want me to keep going? Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh -oh. it ain't keep going. This whole shit gonna get blown up, <laughs> and we don't got no edits today. So I'm gonna save you. <laughs> save me. I'm gonna save you. Nah, don't save me. I'm gonna save you. Just tell us a little you bit. Just tell us a little bit. You know, it's that. Oh shit! <laughs> you ain't never tell me that. You you, 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 you knew, nigga. Fuck out. <laughs> He's lying. This nigga's a liar. Damn. Oh, okay. Uh, 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 but anyway, uh, 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 so I just know Alex got him, his You time. running. You running. Why you running? <laughs> nah, I ain't gonna do that. I bow out. Yeah, yeah. you bow But anyway. You bow out. Did, did he parties did are... He... <laughs> they've been synonymous. There's different versions. Yeah, right. for sure. You know, there's there's the daytime, yeah. there's mm -hmm. the nighttime wholesome, and then there's the, the freaky, BET freaky. after dark. Yeah. The freaky freaky. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Listen, Big Sean, mm -hmm. do we consider him to be a legacy act? Yep. Is that is that a good or bad thing when you think about a legacy act? That's great. I wish I could have somebody attached legacy to my name. Okay. Now, what do you do or what do you say to Glow Rilla just put out her album. It's called mm -hmm. Glorious. She's on pace to sell 60K <laughs> as a new act. Uh, and I also want to give it some love real quick. <laughs> really good project. It'll probably go down as a cult classic for her and her fans. Um, I love how she was able to relate um, subjects pertaining to God, but make it real relatable to like women and other people. Like, mm -hmm. yo, God could be your anchor to lay on or to mm -hmm. hold on to while you're trying to get rid of that man, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I love all that stuff. That mm -hmm. was super dope. Rod Wave also put out an album, same week. He is on pace to sell about 130 to 160. Wow. Mm. And when's the last time Rod dropped? I think it was recently. <laughs> Let me let me double check it. Now these are artists, especially Rod Wave, yeah. who stream really, really well. So you know it's kind of full circle when we speak to our point about the music industry changing and uh, what's popular, what's not. Dog, people are still listening to hip hop music. Yeah, they're still listening to rap. Um, I kind of feel brainwashed in a sense because we hear all of these new records, right? Well, old records that finally turned gold. Mm -hmm. Right, and that we assume probably went platinum, yeah, a decade long, long ago at least, ago. or a long time ago, yeah. right? So again, I just want to throw that out there. I, I love both projects, Rod Wave and Glorious. Um, let me see. Let me. Glorilla see. might be my favorite rapper right now. No, Female or just no? Total. It's not. You favorite lying. period. You lying? Yeah, ho. Not, no, that ass. Yeah, ho. Yeah, ho. That's recency bias. Yeah, ho. Nah, you yeah, ho. Yeah. You ho, we ho. <laughs> yeah, nigga, yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> no, nah, for real. Like, she probably, she, yeah. she might be my favorite rapper today. And I don't know. It's just nobody's really doing anything that moves the needle. And I think she's the closest person that moves the needle. Not saying, like, she's not the biggest thing in the world, but nah. I think she takes her artistry seriously. I think her label nurtures her and pours into her in a way that. I'm used to seeing artists being poured into, yeah. I, and I think she's original. She doesn't she sound is. like she doesn't sound like anybody, anybody else. else. Nah, um, she's dope. There's yeah. nothing wrong with saying and that. She, like she's dope. She like is. the niggas ain't really doing. Oh my god, that's I said I, I don't want to say niggas no Hold more. On. Yo, nah, say it. No, for real. That's nah, my last week saying nah, that. Nah, say it. Uh, no, for real. I gotta stop doing. Nah, it. I gotta stop say saying it. that. That's like the period at the end of the sentence. Yeah, right? these people <laughs> don't really get it done no more. For real. And I think she's she's Should've doing it at a high level. Let me ask she, you a question. What up? Blow your type? 
Yeah, ho. music for sure. <laughs> nah, I'm talking about like, I love music. Cause, yeah, because this, uh, this is I a think new, she's this beautiful. Is, this I is think a new she's beautiful. Sort of on that I'm I'm experiencing right now. Okay, is, is, mm. is she a type? That's I, why you. No, that's she's why you beautiful. Like I think she's amazing. I think her delivery. I think she's an, a phenomenal Ooh. artist. She, yeah. For now sure. all of a sudden he don't understand. Not, yeah. Now he don't. Now he don't. <laughs> yeah. What are you asking me? Ask me. Can she take advantage of you? Do you like her? Can she take advantage of you? For sure. Is that is, is that making up why you're saying you like, no? I think she's that. talented. I think she's good. I think there's a lot of subpar music, okay. a lot of subpar artists, and she's yeah. not one of them. She's definitely okay. not. I she's think definitely. there's a lot of people who don't care about their craft. I think there's a lot of people who don't work on their craft. I think there's a lot of artists up right now who just are in it for the bag. I feel mm. like she is somebody who's original. She has a sound. She has a signature. She cares about a marketing. I see her everywhere. Like I think she can be one of them ones. Okay. Yeah. Like her personally, like, and I hate like I've been thinking about this stuff for the last week. Yeah. And I'm sorry, Alex, to really cut you, you off, you and go. you could pick this up real quick. Yeah. I think she is what <clears throat> people thought Meg The Stallion would be mm. from an artist standpoint. I, I agree with that. I can see that. I, that's I what absolutely I agree with that. No, I yeah. hate to put black like, women against like each other. No, no, no. It's not Damn. even that. Like a like a but woman. That's what it is. A woman who's yeah, able to do the booty shaking music, able to make the hits, but also not be put in a box. Right. We don't take the creativity. Her creativity is constant. We, I, yeah. I, and and I don't want to discredit anything that Megan oh, no, she's has great. been through. She's great, but I don't look at her as an artist anymore. I look at Meg Thee Stallion as a billboard because she's so marketable. Yeah. I don't. When she That's drops, right. I think this is just another avenue to the bigger picture, which is her marketing ability. Yeah. When I see Glorilla, I feel like she wants to take. She's actually these. Playing. Women their heads, heads off, off. Yeah. every time she raps, yeah. and she and she bounced back. Like she was putting out music. I think she did the Uchi Wally sample. How you seen that? Huh? Mm -hmm. huh? How that go? The Uchi? Huh? Uchi Wally? What? Oh my <laughs> niggas! What? It's not, okay. Okay. <laughs> it's not, okay. And yeah. I hated it. A lot of people came yeah. up and hated, but she used it as a a precursor to get better. Mm -hmm. Like she didn't get in her feelings. She mm -hmm. didn't say she was going to retire. Like two C. Like she <laughs> she was just on some like you know what you got huh? Nah, shout out to my man two C because <laughs> now he need to come to court. <laughs> okay, we saw that video. You saying hey. If I don't, if I sell less than twenty thousand copies, I'm gonna retire. Yeah, I've seen that. Okay, pack well, it up. I'm waiting for you, man. To <laughs> <laughs> how many? How many did he sell again? Huh? Did he get a CDL yet? The nah. nigga sold sixteen k. Damn, that's tough. He sold sixteen k. I think you can do that. I, shit. <laughs> I think if I we all hope. put our shit. No, P. Chill, 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 chill. I would hope Look, <laughs> the label's least, not like, the label's not helping too. <laughs> at least, let me just listen. Yeah, that's tough. It's tough, but you know that's the fucked up thing about being an artist, like. You know that nothing yeah. is real, but yet you're still doing it. Yeah, that's deep. It's like, right? You got to make it real for yourself. Like, so like we like talking about it for no reason almost. Yeah, I yeah. don't believe. That, I think no. Let me not say that. I believe there are one, two, three. <laughs> Carry the one. Carry the one. No, <laughs> <laughs> I believe <laughs> there are legit eight artists today. Okay, okay. That can sell hip hop artists, not overall artists, because mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I think there's about eight hip hop artists that can sell over 250,000 units organically. I'm or, not going to name organically. them. I, I agree. Okay. But I believe independent there's, or there's right? only 200. Name some. No matter where, whether Travis they, Scott, anybody. Travis Scott, Kanye I, West. Travis is not on my Drake, list. Drake. There's no way you don't think. Travis huh? is not on my list. Travis Scott He's doesn't sell more follow. than 200,000. 250. Save organically on. i don't well okay. oh, when you say organically, organically you mean like he doesn't do the bundle packages or everybody's yes. doing bundles yes i mean without bundles i mean strictly music okay. i mean you, you have pure sales or streaming pure sales oh then yeah nobody's gonna sell 250 pure no there's yeah. eight people who i think can pure? do pure yes nah Nicki minaj sold like 110 pure on her lash and that's really good i'm talking pure mm -hmm. sales versus like the stream sales mm -hmm. like the, like that two 250 mm -hmm. Can, I mean, Travis is the 400. So who can do it pure? Drake, Nicki Minaj, Travis Scott, um, Kendrick, Kendrick, of course, Future, J. Cole, Future. Uh, where I'm at seven right now. Uh, we're forgetting. Do we think Kanye six. could do it? I, Kanye, I, I said seven. Kanye before. That's seven. Uh -huh. Um, we're forgetting acts. What about the women? Cardi B. Cardi. That's eight. Yeah. Um, All right, that's eight. We, that's eight we right there. I said I don't think there's more than eight. You had a list. 
No, I was no, just doing I off the dome. No, okay. I didn't have a list, but everybody he named, I agree with. So okay. I, yeah. I guess that could be my list. Yeah. I just think it's extremely hard and it's disheartening to be an artist and be like, hey, I want to get into music when all of this shit is smoke and mirrors. Like, mm. we have a mutual person that we know yeah. who knows mm. somebody who presses the buttons and the streams go crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, this shit ain't real. Yeah. So why would I want to get into this business? <laughs> you got to create a life for yourself, man. Real talk. You have to find happiness with what it is you do. Yeah, I was going like, to say that. Like, you can't compare yourself to uh, the big three. Yeah. Don't compare yourself to, you know, Lil Wayne or Jay-Z or nothing like that. You got to know your fan base, see who loves you, and be happy with what comes from that. Yeah. And, and then continue to live your life. And not only that, just appeal to them and what they like, what you think they like. And what there you go. Just, you know, taking in. There you go. I completely agree. But yeah, that's I'm tough. not mad at that. Yeah, man. Real quick, before we get up out of here, there is something as... The three uh, black people on this pod. <laughs> yeah. You about no. to trigger me? Uh -oh. No, I'm not going to trigger about, you. Yeah, you about to trigger me? I just want y'all to hear I've something. I've been through a lot, nigga. I'm here I for know. It. I'm here Just for listen it. to this. This is Fresh and Fit. Um, I don't even know these niggas' names. Myron. Fucking retards. Okay. Um, black people need to just stop being lazy. You're not going to get Whoa. a fucking handout. Okay? We're not going to give you your fucking reparations. Whoa. Because guess who's going to have to pay for that shit? The middle class is going to have to pay for it. Yes. Now, let's keep it a thousand. Damn. You niggas get your reparations. What you gonna do with it? You gonna buy a bunch of some Jordans, some fucking drugs, what? some weed. They're gonna buy some weed. Nigga? Yeah. Yo, nigga. Yeah. What good, my, you gotta buy, my you gotta boy? You gotta buy some Fendi. You gotta buy what? some bullshit. And he's saying this to a black nigga right next to him. Yeah, yeah. He's gonna right? spend the go money back, and invest. Go back to jail. Oh, majority are gonna do criminal shit. Oh yeah, my God. 100%. Come on, man. Let's keep it a million. Let's keep it all the way a million. Rims. He's triggering. Oh yeah, look at that shit spin, nigga. Yeah. yeah. Oh, look at that shit spin. Whoa, it's stupid, bro. Whoa, bro. I'm telling whoa, you, bro. Niggas, man. The the nigga shit, man. Ooh, just Please stop nigga, saying nigga. Nigga. Go fucking do shit with it. I tried being a nigga for like what? six months. That shit retarded, nigga. But you're black. <laughs> retarded, what are you bro. talking yeah, listen, about? Man. Big monkey chains yeah. and all that. I tried that shit, nigga. That shit retarded. <laughs> monkey chains? I tried to assimilate to these fuck niggas, man. That shit was ass, dog. Yo, yo, yo. Nigga, okay. I know I can't speak, but niggas be like, What's good, bro? Yo, let's go, nigga. I was like, what'd you say? Uh, <laughs> you high on lean and shit. Oh, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, you want some? I'm like, no. niggas be mumbling and shit. Bro. Yeah. Alex. Good, man. <sighs> Anyhow, uh, it, it was fun. Hey, Alex. Bro. Yo, bro, what? <laughs> Yo, the, the hard ER. Alex! Mo mo monkey chains? This is the definition of self hate, bro. I, I don't even know where I, like. This is the definition of self hate. <sighs> Absolutely. Like, what was. Yeah, go ahead. No, continue. What, what, what were they referencing? Were they talking about how Kamala Harris came out and said she'd give a million dollars to black entrepreneurs? Recently? I think so. He started the conversation basing it off this clip. He talked about reparations. That's one of the things that black people, the black community, or just a conversation in general, a, a social construct conversation has been brought about, mm -hmm. which is reparations oh. for people who have had a disadvantage in life. Mm -hmm. It is a known fact that most <clears throat> black Americans, all of us, have had a disadvantage in this country. For sure. For sure. And so the conversation of reparations is something that has come up because people are like, hey, we should get it. We deserve it now. However you feel about that, that's on you. Mm -hmm. But Bro. it's undeniable to look at people's situation, black people's situation, and say, hey, we've been at a disadvantage from the inception of this country being built. For sure. Black people are not monolithic. <clears throat> it sounds like somebody really used to bully him back in the day <laughs> or bully the both of them. Yeah. And now they have to carry that inside of them and they have this very skewed perspective of how black people are. Because I know black doctors, mm -hmm. I know black entrepreneurs, I know black scientists. I know black people who, when given the opportunity, they thrive. So, unfortunately, this does just sound as like self hate and just a lot of projection. You know, um, yeah. I think they hate themselves. Like, I think these are both brown skinned, dark skinned men, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is, I, I got nothing for this man. And that's just nasty behavior because <sighs> it's the type of shit they would never say to a dude's face, though. And they may, <laughs> and I want to say the yeah, reason they yeah, may yeah. say it because based on I th I believe his name is Myron. Yep. Um, I'm not sure his ethnicity. I Me think that's either. been in question. Yeah. He doesn't. He he he's obviously brown skin, dark skin, brown skin, whatever. Weirdo. But I'm not <laughs> exactly sure what it is he identifies as. Right. Um, but his co-host is obviously a black person. Yeah. For sure. Um, I'm not sure where neither one of these gentlemen are from, but. 
watching and coming across that content for a while and they do have a very incel fueled base yeah, mm-hmm. yeah this is incel right? talk mm-hmm. for sure this is you know I don't even know how to get it. just alpha beta all that bullshit like the energy. shit like it, it's just weird vibes over there I know yeah. they've been suspended from certain platforms I know they've demonetized yeah, all of these too. things yeah. right so the only reason why I even bring this to our podcast is because again the beginning of this clip said anything about reparations and I don't I, I haven't really given it any thought on what I feel about reparations I've but given I, a lot but, of I, but I do know <laughs> <laughs> but I do know personally yeah. that black people have been and are at a disadvantage when it comes to the infrastructure, Absolutely. the knowledge, <clears throat> the financial literacy, um, the credit of yes. this country. Absolutely. Yeah. And so for that reason alone, whether you feel, whether he feels like back black people should spend money on rim, whatever he said, whatever stereotypes he tried to play into Widow. is none of his concern to where those reparations come from i think he might be referencing during the pandemic when you know we got the the the, the money stimmies. that stimmies the, the, the stimmies and then niggas ev- everybody and flocked them. to the yams yeah that might be what he's talking about but listen 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 <clears throat> if it was me right if i was voted for president right i obviously i don't know what goes into the whole thing or what type of the restraints that yeah someone in that seat has but if I were giving out reparations, there would have to be like a system in place more so of like education. Because it's not that you can't give everybody money, whether you're black, white, brown, or yellow. You just got to be educated. So if you don't know what you're going to do with it, or if you have no plan, then you're going to plan to fail. Like, you, you know, you're going to buy frivolous things. You're going to buy things that make no sense. It's not going to work in your favor. And at the end of the day, like, you're just going to mismanage it. But if there was a plan or... Hey, like, like, say if you guys, say if I was white, right? And I became president. So and I was white, like, man. you know what I mean? What's up, uh, what's up, my, white, what's up, my, you can't say my it dudes? if you're white. Yeah. Nah, you know what they say. <laughs> call me, dude. Hey, brother. Hey, say, hey bro. Hey, hey brother. Hey, nah, it's brother. <laughs> hey, dude. Hey, dude. Dude. Bro- brother. Hey, hey brother. Dude. So I would say, hey, like, <laughs> I got a million for you. I got a million for you, right? Right. Until you pass or until you graduate college. Um, or, you know, if you want to tap into some of that to mm-hmm. pay for college, mm-hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. Maybe, you know, put an incentive behind that. Hey, you'll, you'll get more. Mm-hmm. But just as long as there's a plan or a, a strategic system in place to like, hey, like, oh, I don't want to give you this so that it becomes you, so you detriment. Become- uh, I see what you-, you know what I mean. Am I wrong for saying that? I don't think you're wrong. I just, I, it just, just sounds like more slavery. Like, so. like the person who is itch, issuing out reparations to your point, we don't know if this will ever happen mm-hmm. or how it would go down. Nah, put yourself in the seat. You president, what you doing? If I'm president, yeah. I can't tell you what to do with your money. It goes back to how this country was even started, right? Like okay. a black person being three-fifths of a man mm-hmm. and the other white people, et cetera, being them home selves, being able to do whatever it is that they want to For do sure. with yeah. no restrictions. Yeah. That's kind of where my head goes with this, right? Like, if they ever wanted to give out reparations one day, you're just going to have to close your eyes and do it. You know, you know will there be I some th- people that spend it frivolously? Mm-hmm. I'm sure. Will there be some people that take it seriously? I'm confident, right? But a lot of times people don't realize that you're the oppressor. So as the oppressor, you still can't continue to think you know what's best for me when you oppress me. So I'm, you know what I'm saying? I would be an oppressor for putting a system in place. Before the person gets no, them. you would be an oppressor because of history. By by putting a system in place, like hey, like this is the goal to meet, so you can get this. That's yes, yeah, because you're setting it. You you see what I'm getting. I don't have to set it like hey, like you gotta you gotta graduate from Harvard. It's like yo, just graduate any college. I feel you. You're still setting it because there are black people here that felt like this country was built on their backs. For sure, it was when yeah, yeah. there was nothing here, right? Mm-hmm. So there wasn't a college, there wasn't a school to go to, etc. Right? Yeah. Like, or, or even let's let's take college out, okay? Right? And yeah. again, I did say you can use some of that um, some of that money beforehand to pay for the college, but let's say that's out of the picture. Yeah, there's got to be a, a some type of education system because yo, bro, we see all the time people get money, they don't know how to how to make it work for themselves, and you just wind up not doing the best and some some people die you know what i mean it's buy life. things that, that they don't need yeah. so like i think it would be irresponsible of the government to give out reparations to a certain extent without there being some type of guideline and I, i'm not saying 
raise the roof, uh, raise the the standard through the roof. But like, there's got to be something. If you, if you're gonna say, hey, I'm gonna give you whatever amount of dollars, whatever amount of reparations, because you're a black American, mm -hmm. right? Strictly because you're black, mm -hmm. you can't then tell me what I can and can't do That's with that thing. money because yeah. you haven't made it a mandated effort to give me the proper knowledge and education right. to do Tools. whatever it is that you grant me that money. So whatever I decide to do with whatever I receive is on me. Now, them not understanding the fact that there are just people who are born at a disadvantage mm -hmm. because that's what they're speaking. They're speaking to the ignorance and they're speaking to the, the people, the minorities who don't have a family structure, who may not come from a two parent household, who may not come from a one parent household who just has the knowledge, Thanks. because that's another thing. There could be just a one parent in the household who just happens to overcompensate for there not being two parents, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. there is a lot that you can tell they're speaking from privilege. You can tell they're speaking from their life experience. Mm -hmm. Cool, your life experience is all on you, but you can't discount the fact that the inception of this country in particular was created and built off the, the backs of black people. Right. And we have never been acknowledged. We have never been compensated. Um, and so for those who ask for reparations, okay. I don't think it's, it's, it's unfair to ask for. And I don't think it's something that should be taken lightly. Now, my opinion on do I agree or disagree? I think that's a completely different conversation. But for these two men who would be considered black, because how I identify privileged somebody that's black. black. Did you say? I would consider them privileged black. Privileged black. Okay. They got a platform. Obviously, they're making money. So mm -hmm. the, the seat that they're speaking from is not a, of an impoverished. But one of them, we, Myron, I don't know if he's even black. I don't know, I don't he know if he identifies as black. I don't know if he's Guyanese. I don't know what I don't know he if he's Trini. I'm about to look it up right he, now. He may I don't be, know what that name and, 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 and his features say, I could be a little bit different. Nigga. You know, like, I don't know <laughs> what he identifies nigga. as. Features right? say like, nigga, yeah. But I do know <laughs> if he were to get stopped, if he were to walk into the, 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 the fucking... Midwest of this country and walk into a random bar in, in fucking South Dakota, they're going to look at him and they're not going to say, hey, man, you're fucking Egyptian. <laughs> hey, man, you're Middle Eastern. Hey, man, you're Latino. Yeah. Hey, man, you're Caribbean. No, they're going to look at you and say, you're black. But I think they just have been protected and shielded by whatever their experience has been. And it's allowed them to earn a certain amount of ignorance. Oh, for and this sure. is why we get what it is that we get. So I, the only reason why I wanted to highlight that, because there is a lot of fuck niggas, a lot of retail. Weirdos. Like, oh, wait, mm. I almost said the word. Yeah, I almost said what you, you You held yourself. There's a lot of people who are uneducated <laughs> and just stupid. Absolutely. And I think these two brothers, I think they have a lot of potential because you can't build that type of platform without having some type of intelligence. So they are intelligent in their own right. And I'm not as familiar with them, but I do think there's a lot of instances where they come off as just being dumb and uninformed and unaware and self-hatred. Y'all niggas hate yourselves. Yes. Y'all niggas hate black women. Y'all niggas hate black incels, men. Y'all niggas are incels. Y'all niggas are fucking weird. Widows. And you know the craziest part about it is that we could dip out of this. Mm -hmm. Myron, that's the guy's yep, name Myron. that you're looking up? Myron Gaines. See, he well, was that, a, That's he, his pseudo name. He's got a... Uh, yeah, that's not his name. What's real his real name? name? Oh my god. We don't got nigga. Oh my god. What are you talking about? Nigga, we don't got Dre, please we mark don't that. Got Kira Dre, today. please mark that. Dre. Yo, please. We don't Dre, got the, we please don't, mark that. We don't got the producer today. I forgot. I got in my bag. We don't got like, what? Cause that nigga, he's a weirdo. He wanna play both sides of the fence, bro. Like fuck out of here. The main twin man. Like, I get it. Now, now look, right? Yo, he's tripping. Bro. He used to work for the federal government. Yeah, FBI. He used to be a special. He used to be an FBI agent. Yeah. These are what some of the FBI agents sound like. That's mm. not scary to you? Long <laughs> That's New, not scary to he's, you? He's from New Britain, Connecticut, and I think uh, he's Sudanese. Sudanese. Uh, so you African? I think. Oh, so okay. So you- Parents are uh, Sudanese. Okay. Well, stop acting like that and stop thinking that black people are monolithic, man. But I think that gives him- I think he feels like that gives him license to, to, to say- To speak? All the, yeah, things that he's saying. Yeah, but he's going to realize the Lord and the world will humble you. In <laughs> ways you do not know. Right? Yo, please make sure y'all mark that bullshit. Yeah, gotta mark that shit. Because I ain't even mean that shit. Yo, dick, nah, man, that we ass. leaving that. Yo, he's just passionate like that, <laughs> niggas. Oh, I gotta stay, stop saying this. <laughs>
Nah, you good. I can't. No, for real. I have to make <laughs> nah, a conscious effort ahead, of out. not doing that and saying that on the pod. <laughs> but you can say it sometimes. Sometimes, but he, he they just weird to me. Yeah. It's just weird to me. I get it. I get it. But we you, don't get close to those. You think they people. do that intentionally? I don't clicks. know why yeah. they do it. I, just, I, I think yeah. they truly live in their own like world. world. And we all mm. live in our own filter bubble. I always yeah. like to mention the filter bubble. I hope they're still teaching that in college, the filter bubble, because right. it is a thing. Like yeah, sure. your algorithm, my algorithm yeah. is not the same, especially from somebody who may live in a very uh, alt-right kind of reality. Uh -huh. Like everything is a little bit different. Like yeah. there was an experiment that I went through when I was in college, right? Mm. If you, everybody in the classroom, okay. again, Alex and I, we went to school um, in a very predominantly white PWI. Yeah. PWI. You know I, I, went to, I went to PWI also. Yeah, and so yeah, yeah, yeah. everybody in that classroom, we typed in the same keywords. It was flight to Egypt. Okay. Legit. On the, your own laptop. The professor said, hey, everybody, okay. I want you to type in the words of flight to Egypt. I'm about to do that right now. And all of us got a different result right for now. what came up the sponsored ads the 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 airlines that like and that was way back then it gave me My spirit <laughs> but the white girl sure. next to me it was a delta price <laughs> i said wait hold on <laughs> what the fuck yeah. is going on no like legit nah, that's crazy because the, they just had, had assumed it, right it, they, i got united know. what that mean i don't know <laughs> it means you live in new jersey that's what i'll <laughs> yeah, say that's but i know it's just it's, it's just different so that filter yeah. bubble is a little bit different and maybe these guys are just a little bit sheltered and they don't understand the history that's crazy. and the, the 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 privilege that it is to be black yeah and it's weird and it's crazy and i hope somebody educates them but the fucked up thing about today is that money clouds everything and maybe they're making a really good living mm -hmm. so they don't have to understand or be educated on what it is to be black but when you get on your podcast or your platform and you talk like this saying, and again yeah. we're just talking to this clip i think is extremely dangerous uneducated ignorant and disgusting for them to even talk like that because at the end of the day you're you're black yeah right and I understand it may be hard. I understand you may uh, come you might from not want to be may, that. maybe Latino. Maybe you might be Middle Eastern. Maybe right. you may, whatever it is you may be, when you get pulled over by the cops and they look at you and they say, oh, yo, nah, get out the car, whatever the case may be. Guess like, what? You Still are black. black. Guess like, what? <laughs> understand what it is to be black mm -hmm. in this country. I know black. You know, I know black. You ever seen that? Yeah, of course. I've I know black. That. Of course. <laughs> also, self hate is a terrible thing. When I Googled flight to Egypt, mm -hmm. I got Expedia. Damn, and you got on. United? Yeah. I'm going to Google my now, y'all. Yeah, I bet. No, about the second, he's about to say spirit again. Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he's grown past that. <laughs> They've learned him over time. Okay. It's going to be like JetBlue. Alaska. My second one was American Alaska. Airlines. Okay, they like me. See? See? Myron, dumbass. <laughs> Fuck wrong with you. Can't put me in a box like the algorithm <laughs> and you. Hello? What's going on, man? No, I got Expedia. You got Expedia? Got Expedia. Oh, got Expedia. So they say we the same. I, I thought they were yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> nah, this has been good, though. Yes, this man. has been good, man. We got to get up out of here, though. I ain't going to lie. Yo, congrats on, on you know, all of us on the stew. So. Thanks, man. Appreciate Fine. it. Thank well, you for yeah, helping. I don't, yeah, pay, I don't just... pay for nothing. No, <laughs> no you've been, you been assisting. Like, yeah. You've been helping Come us, Come on, bro. you're part of the team, bro. We appreciate We appreciate that. you. Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, um, with that being said, we appreciate y'all rocking with us. The Need to Know podcast. What you need to know, when you need to know. On the Need to Know podcast. I don't know. I'm 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 about to go home. I'm gonna be Same. a little bit upset because of this last conversation that we had. <laughs> let uh, it go, but thank y'all for tapping in. If you made it this far in the podcast, there's no reason that you aren't subscribed. There's no reason you haven't liked, comment, whatever it is. Make us aware of who you are. Right. I wish I would have said this at the top of the podcast. Mm -hmm. Our gone? Apple comments are very dry. Oh, go show love to that. And I, I never like, even knew you could do that. I don't even like that. Oh, yeah. Like, you know when you, like you, you can rate it? Yeah. I don't like that yeah, shit. You can leave comments. I don't like that shit. You don't like that? Mm -hmm. Go yeah, flood it, y'all. Make sure it. we go flood that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's what you need to know, when you need to know, on the Need to Know podcast. We will be back again next week. We appreciate y'all. We love y'all. Thank y'all. And we'll be here again. Peace, Peace. out, y'all. Gang. Okay.